Do you have a light go in mind for the people watching this video? This video does not get 2,000 likes, guys. I will be extremely disappointed. Like, think about it. The hype of group I'm in coming out in leagues, like, you just got to slap that like button now. Like, stop what you're doing. Get your hands off your food. Just press the like button now. There we go. It's not that hard, is it? They're beautiful. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> slap the like button. <laughs> Welcome to the Old School RuneScape podcast, where we talk to RuneScape content creators about RuneScape content. I'm in that cat, one of your hosts, followed by... What's going on, boys? Rakes as always. And hello, it's me, Rice Cub. And today we have one of the biggest creators in all of the RuneScape community, Mr. MMORPG, a.k.a. Curtis, the Juice Man. One of the best Iron Man accounts that's ever, you know, existed in RuneScape. How you doing, Thank you, Rice Cub. I'm doing absolutely fantastic, boys, and an absolute pleasure to be on it. Thank you so much for the invite. Uh, I'm excited to talk about everything RuneScape, so... Let's let's get it going, dude. If I can real quick pop off a question for you, Curtis. So yes, we we have a bit of an ongoing joke here with Rice Cup having like ten twisted bows. This man <laughs> just, he's hoarded them. So how many well, do you have? Do you have multiple T bows? Uh, I have three. I got one originally oh, in group raids. I used to just do seven man raids the entire time. Uh, so I saw six before I got my own. Uh, and then I pulled out one in a solo, and then one in challenge mode. It's a free total. Nice. But I ain't got the omelet yet. So maybe more. We'll see. Fingers crossed. Oh, Boost the bank value a little bit. But they have been getting hit hard there. recently, though. I've been watching my bank value go down because of these Tebos. Because for the longest yeah. time, I was like, the Tebow will never drop below a bill. Never. It's just that massive yeah. item that everyone wants. And I was like, this item is so OP. Like, how could it go down? And then recently, the Ellie's been, you know, taking the, uh, taking the throne again, which I'm happy about. Because it deserves yeah. it. It does. Nice, man. Yeah. Yo, can we get a comparison? Rice, what is your bank value right now? Do you know? Dude, I don't yeah, even man. know, man. Last time oh, I checked, you got an estimate. He knows. Got an estimate. Last I checked, <laughs> it was like 14, but I dropped like a lot of stuff. Yeah, to be fair, there. Rice has been dropping a ton of items on his account. Like, I never do that. I'm just like, like I want to <laughs> keep the bank value going, you know? I want to keep it yeah, 14? Yeah. And you're modest about four, it's 14. Like, it's what? only 14, yeah. Bill, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, like, I remember it was like 20 one time, but then I dropped a bunch of stuff. and then That's like, all, crazy, all, though. Obviously, the items went down in price, right? Mm. Like, too. So, like, that, that number doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. yeah, it's the raids that will bring in the massive bank value. I've noticed yeah. uh, when Nightmare came out as well, like, these items being 400, 500 mil, you know, you get a harmonizer that's a bill to the bank. Like, that was five yeah. bill just in Nightmare items there. Um, so, compared to, like, my last bank video to the one I'll record this year, I'm actually going to go down money the first time in like four years. I'll yeah. go down four bit. I'm just there like, what? Because this How year, is that? yeah, it's crazy. Like this year's economy has just crashed so much. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's just the anticipation for like new items coming out and also just people, you know, losing interest or just tossing it into like, you know, these other big ticket items. That's probably it. I mean, I think the Bulwarks have been on a rampage lately. Someone yeah. told me they're above yeah. 10 mil right now, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, I've tested it with full Justice and like max strength, and it's actually pretty decent. Like hitting forties, you know, high forties is actually really, really good. Dude, and I've I've saw I, clips of the Inferno as well. Have you seen that? Like yeah, that I've guy wave sixty two just rushing through, just killing everything. Pray of mage. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah. Dude, wait, oh are you God. talking with the dins and yeah, the weapon dins, you kill them with? Yeah, dins bought because they've made it from seven tick to five tick now, and I'm pretty sure the crush bonus is more, so it's actually used as a weapon. So you could pretty much go into a boss as a tank and just hit Bandos with this bulwark, you know, yeah. like no tomorrow. That's the damage awesome. now it's scaled, yeah. right with your Dude, defense look at midmad so. cow's grin right do you want to know why i'm so happy about this i i joined his stream like a few weeks ago and he had like a hundred bulwarks sat on his oh account. my <laughs> inside knowledge more. right there exposed i can't believe it midmad yeah. cow's working with jack it's no way oh who would have thought uh, Jeez. so my did you my actually idea, sell them no i have all of them i got 240 right now oh, wow. my idea was <laughs> I was going to try to make a movement so that everyone yeah. bought bulwarks and got them out the wild. Well, that didn't really happen. So now I'm just really rich. <laughs> you know what? It works out. You were trying to be the good Samaritan and it works out. You know, that's good karma right there if I've ever seen it. <sighs> Still holding, baby. Still holding. By the way, Curtis, what is your bank value on your iron? Uh, your right now, value? 20 bill. Uh, Pretty much 20 bill on the dot. Yes. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. That's good. So I've never really Some dropped sweats. anything. Yeah. That's the only insane. thing I've dropped is like prayer scrolls, yeah. Avernix for like bonds, but. Other than that, I just like to keep the back value going because yeah, so, I don't really play any of your accounts, you know, so there's no point dropping it. Yeah, what's your take on, uh, you know, when, like, let's say when someone's like, how, how much is your bank worth, you know? Yeah. Does that question ever bother you? Because obviously, you know, we play an Iron Man mm -hmm. and we're not really trying to sell anything and, no. and whatnot. Like, does that ever bother you? Because sometimes I'd be like, man, I don't know why everyone's judging yeah. the value of my account based on 
the the GP of trading, you know, because like this is stuff I just physically got on my own, you know, like yeah, I, don't know. I think it's, it's like, more it's the so fact, weird. yeah, that, you know, the majority of the game are main, so they are going to care yeah. about bank value. So when they obviously exactly. they join like an Ironman stream, the first thing they ask is, you know, how much is your bank yeah. value? And obviously, Runelite's got this really nifty feature that for ages where it just says your bank's fourteen bill. Here you go. So I think it's just an interest for people, especially because um, bank videos are a very popular concept. Like usually I upload a bank video, don't really do YouTube. It pulls like, you know, 150K views just like that. For me, just literally sitting there, turn on the record and just talk about the bank. People love it. I don't know why. <laughs> they just love seeing like the items, you know? So I think it's just uh, a very popular concept between them. Yeah, and, I watched uh, that whole video. Yeah, it yeah. was mesmeri <laughs> mesmerizing. Yeah, just, oh my I God. just put the mic nice and close. Because I'm using a Blue Yeti right now, but I've got a Shore at home. But that thing on the upgrade, oh, it's so good. I love recording with that. Uh, That's a proper podcast, mate. Dude, I, I think I've watched every single one of your bank videos. And <laughs> it really is just like a mains mentality of like, yeah. you just you just look at the bank value that you have and you think, I could do so much with that money. Mm. And I, it's just like, and it's so funny because bank videos back in the day used to be all the range. Like everybody made bank videos back in old days on YouTube. Exactly. It's a very popular thing. It's been back in the day, like RuneScape music videos and bank videos were the thing. You know, RuneScape music videos went aside, bank videos stayed the king. And now, you know, everyone kind of jumps on them, especially if they're doing like progress videos. They'll throw it into like maybe one of the progress videos that they're working on just to slap yeah. a little bank video on the side. It's great. Filler. People love it. Yeah, put the filler content in there, exactly. But it's just uh, nice to show enough, like, you know, all the things you've achieved. I think it kind of just gives an overview of, you know, what you worked sure. on over the year. That's what it's all about for me. It's like, I've got this this year. This is the ground I've been working on. Show the kill counts to kind of represent that. See how spooned you are. See how unlucky you got. You know, and you can kind of see over it. You know, it balances out over time. RNG is a very weird thing. Yeah. Like, to be fair, I'd rather talk about the kind of like the stories leading up to these items. Yeah. versus like oh this is you know the value you know that would be exactly. like the quickest thing i, I talk about it's about know? the journey because think about it you get an yeah. item quick no one really gives a crap about it but no, then really nobody you know you lead up to um a like big item for, exactly yeah do that yeah. grind for like two years you know people talk about it that got to like top eight of reddit i've all read it um you know the video got tons of views the clip was at like 200k views on twitch it's crazy like the journey is yeah. what what makes the item and what makes oh, the grind absolutely. so well, the dry you go the right there what is the driest you've been? Is, would that be the Ellie? Oh, absolutely. Would that be the Ellie? <laughs> the, dry, the driest right now is actually the grinds I'm doing. Now. Okay, I've got three simultaneous pet grinds right now going on, which is the Zamorak uh, pet, the Rex pet, and KBD. And I'm five-figure kill counts for all of these right now. Ooh, so, wow, yeah. Man. So our Rex is sitting at about 16,000 right now, one in 5k <laughs> pet. Zamorak's at 11k. And then you got KBD at 11k as well for a one in 3,000 pet. So it's kind of like, oh. when are we going to break these? You know, what I mean? it's like, yeah, yeah. when does this stop? But um, in terms of like drop rates being dry, I reckon it's like Rex pet. You know, that is man, getting ridiculous right now. Like, Curtis, what keeps you going, man? Like, when, oh. you've, when you've got a huge grind like that, like, do you not just get, do you ever get frustrated as hell? Because I feel like you're always nah, super, nah. you know, you're, yeah. you're very like <laughs> smooth and like you, you just keep it together. Like if I go even just like a KC over the drop rate, I'm just like, this game sucks. And I get so frustrated. Absolutely. Yeah, I know what I, you mean. What, what, what do you do, man? Like, do you screw? You want to know what it is? Stream? Absolutely not. I mean, it's just over time of grinding this account, I just feel like the grind mentality is kind of, you know, shapes the player that I am today. And the more grinds I've done, you know, the more mentality I've built up. So I think it's just I've built this huge level of patience where I can now combine uh, grinds that I've done together and compare them to other stuff and be like, I've done that before. I can do this easy, you know. And it's just yeah. kind of like the drier I go, the more motivated I get because I just know at the end of this grind it's going to feel like amazing of what you've achieved. And obviously streaming is a massive motivation. You know, when you're live, you've got people egging you on, people going, oh, good luck today. And, you know, my chat's extremely humble to the sense where you'll be motivated each day going live. And that's why I love doing it. That's why I love going live, just streaming these grinds and it works out really well. So I think it's just all about the support you get, the mentality of wanting to do the grind and the best part and the most important part is enjoying it. If you don't enjoy the grind, then you're, you're gonna burn. It's, it's the secret. You need to enjoy the goals that you're setting and um, what I like to do is called a goal tree where you have like the trunk is the main goal. You've got branches coming off. So you kind of combine stuff together. So you have like the main goal is all pets off that. You have the individual pets, maybe clues tied in with that. And it's um, the best way to go about it. That's how I've always done it. That's, mm. a good, that's a good way of looking at it. God damn. It really is, man. Oh my God. Yeah. 
Did you start so, this mentality out when old school RuneScape came to light again? Uh, or how, no, how I was streams back then? I was super bad at the game when old school first came out. Like back in the day, all I used to do was house parties because I started out, <laughs> I started out and like just chat room games, like have a hotel. I used to just, you know, go on, just talk to my friends all day. And when I found RuneScape actually through Habbo, I was like, oh, you know, I can actually like do the kind of the same thing here, but you know, build up a character on the side. So a lot of the time I was just training these skills that would allow me to, you know, do like construction and did like house parties. And I never really did like a lot of the boss or questing. Like I was never Max Combat back in pre-EOC. Never did like most of the quests. Didn't even do next, you know. Now that's been announced, I'm super excited because it's like doing it for the first time. Um, but no, I think it's just all about, you know, the, the grinds that are built up. And yeah, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been amazing. Loved it. So it's, far, it's fair to say that... Um like once you made an iron man and kind of like went through those grinds it, it changed you a lot right as, as a yeah absolutely i think i learned the game i learned the game while playing mm -hmm. iron man like a lot of these grinds i was doing on my arm was for the first time ever you know so that's why i think it was super motivating to play it because i was always you know working on something new and it was always fresh to me so you know going for the first matscape going for the first like say boss drop from god wars that was for me was for the first time ever never did it back in the day did it for the first time just kind of learned and have fun with it and it was yeah, this, enjoyable so, so this this uh it's like an extended uh, extended question here so you're probably one of the most like consistent streamers you know probably one of the most patient streamers in in, in our category so how, how does how does playing an iron man affect that in any way because i feel like there's some similarities right because you're grinding in both aspects and you're you know you're not giving up and you're not getting too mad over any yeah. you know anything that happens right throughout the years yeah, absolutely. Like, how does that go I together? think it's I think it goes together quite well because Iron Man, like you've got content for months, years, because you can just set like a grind of say going for a certain boss item and you can do like 10, 20 streams of just doing this content. So realistically, you can bang out like eight hour streams a day. And because RuneScape's such like a, a massive thing with everything to do, like you can make hardly any progress. Like one percent of the content's progress on like a stream. So realistically, you can, you know, stretch out a boss for like a month's period. Like I've seen people, you know, do uh, like Faux Sunny's Nightmare for like a month straight, just trying to grind one item. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, same with raids. Like I know you've done obviously your raids grind, Rise Cup. Like you've been, yeah. you made a whole account around that, right? So you can kind of, you know, <laughs> yeah. see how it's really easy to kind of tie in the armor mode with that because you set a goal of saying, I want to go for this certain item. You know, you do like a whole month streams of that and it's great. You make a series out of it. I feel like the most important part is just letting your viewers know exactly what you're working on and letting them know you've got a goal set in stone and it's really easy to follow along. And I think that's, the secret to Iron Man streaming is always telling people what you're working towards. Yeah. Nice, man. Now, I wonder, I'm going to keep it on RuneScape, but have you played any other MMOs in your life? There was only one other MMO, and it was when it first came out, and it was called Terra Online. Oh. Um, and the reason why I played that is because it was, um, oh, I can't remember, it must have been like during old school, I can't remember when it was released, I think it was like 10 years ago now? 5 years ago? Pretty sure it was 5, 6 years ago. But uh, me and some friends were just looking for a game to play, and this new MMO came out, and we were like, oh, let's just jump on it. And we played it for like a solid one month straight of just building these characters together, and it was super fun. It was very like kind of anime themed, but no, I, I loved it. And I feel like just getting together with friends and kind of jumping into an MMO and just leveling up and figuring out for the first time is really, really fun. Because it was one of those games where you had like abilities, you could like spam these bosses, these raids, and go through these dungeons. It was great. And that's why I think this group I'm in coming out is going to be a super big success because it's just, at the end of the day, you're getting on with the boys, you're having fun, and you're just seeing where it takes you. It doesn't have, have to be you, super serious. Have you announced your squad for a group Iron Man yet? Yes. I might not have been paying um, attention. It was as early as uh, when it first got announced at uh, RuneFest in 2019. And, like, Mifo Ooh. and Mammal were like, boys, we have to get together and do this thing because I remember the day of release on Raids, like, we just got together hit up some chambers and it was the most funniest streams ever. Like we ran into like Vast and just got one bagged and everything and just had no idea what was going on. And the arms were super scuffed, like four hour raids. Oh, it was fantastic. So, you know, naturally when Group Iron Man came around or the idea started popping, we were like, oh boys, we got to link up and kind of do this. And then uh, obviously Roydy started uh, rising to uh, streaming as well. And he's been growing exponentially because of his uh, hardcore gameplay. And we were like, you know, this is the perfect fourth person to get in as well. Um, we originally hit up um, Sick Nerd and Boaty as well. They've got other plans. Obviously, Sick Nerd's branching out to Variety now. Um, and then Boaty's more focused on his solo hardcore. But we were like, we just want to build this big streamer group and just, you know, push it and see what we can do. Um, so, yeah, yeah. it's going to be me, uh, Foe, Roydy, and Mr. Mammal. 
What a it's powerhouse, yeah. bro. That's going to yes. be a like sweat team yeah. right there. I could not wait. It is going to be amazing. And these guys oh. are like, you know, the same similar goals as me. So I think it's going to be an absolute amazing time. And they're so chill. Like, we're not going to take it super serious to where we're like, oh, we need to keep these lives because we'll start out as hardcores and see how far we get. But, you know, these guys are hardcore veterans. You know, they've been playing it, what, four or five years. So it's great. So um, with your hardcore, no, sorry, with your group Iron Man team, do you guys have like a specific goal slash rush that you're planning to do to begin with? Or are you just going like straight for high scores to the end game? Like w what is the plan? What is the vision? What's the goal for the team? Or are you just, are you just smashing it out together? Here's the thing. We've got like a massive block in between our plan. Cause obviously Jagex <laughs> decided to put a league a month after group I'm in release, which doesn't really make sense. Like we need to branch into that after this conversation probably. But, yes, please. Um, yeah, the whole league aspect of it coming out a month after, it doesn't really make sense to me. I always thought a league first would be great, followed by a group. But I think I know what it is. It's the higher ups obviously going, oh, we need to do this content, you know, this content, especially with like MMOs like New World coming out. RuneScape yeah. need to release content now to kind of get people playing, you know, and get people off like the other games. That's what it comes down to. But um, yeah, we have got a, a little bit of an early plan. I think we want to try and get to God Wars before um, the league comes out, just because that'll be quite nice content to do together. Um, but our starting out is going to be basically the strats that we know and kind of link up together later on. So if we're strong at a certain starting aspect, you know, we rush that, make our own plan, and then just help each other out with resources along the way. But I think the strat for Group Iron Man is kind of having these roles with these skills where you're kind of dumping these supplies into the production skills on one character uh, to kind of, you know, supply the other teammates. So, for example, one guy just give all the herbs to him. He does all the potions, supplies the rest of the team. One guy does the crafting. That's going to be the strat. Like, we're going to see these roles for the first time that we've never seen in RuneScape. And that makes this mode so interesting for the early game. Yeah. Dude, I'm so relieved to hear that you're doing, ba uh, well, doing God Wars. Because uh, yeah. my, my group, Iron Man, we, uh, we, we got a little plan. It's a very, like, short-term focus. I'm so glad you're not doing it, man, because I feel like you guys would destroy us playing 12 hours a day. Because um, we're, we're trying to get the first sigil from Corp. Oh, and I mean, beautiful. We're, we're gonna just like we're planning to get the Corp within like the first month, and we're gonna be killing like Legend Men Shaman with like bone crossbows and stuff, then killing Zamis with God knows what. So yeah, I, I'm very glad to hear you're not going for that because yeah. I think that you'd probably get it like a month before we would. Okay, sorry to burst your bubble, but we did have a very temptation no! to do court. Very big <laughs> temptation. We were like, hmm, imagine doing a sigil. Like, the court got to be so easy now. But the thing is, like, farming a dragon woman the first month, we, we wasn't too sure if that was going to be viable. And we were like, maybe we should just do the God Wars grind, you know, get BGS, because that's the exactly. most important part of court, if you think about Dude. it. Like, that does all stats. Please, and plus please. you're grinding Band of Sami. You know? The placeholders are so important this time. Think about it. If you're grinding Lizard and Shamans, you're going for one one in 5k um, hammer. If you're doing these Band of Skills, four of you all pounding this you know, big goblin, then mm. you're going to be getting these oh, BCPs. Yeah, you're going to get these BCPs, <laughs> these Tassies, you know? you're going to be dropping those pants like no tomorrow. It's going to be great. Dude. Getting these hilts, hell yeah. Please keep yeah. thinking like that, Curtis. Please, because um, <laughs> like in no, my that's, head, that's a real thing. In my head, the way that I've came like to the conclusion of the Dragon Warhammer is there's five of us. It's a one in five yeah. k drop. So technically, if we all kill it a thousand times, like I this don't is know, like man. big brain. This is like Eureka <laughs> moment right now. I'm just seeing the numbers in front of me. <laughs> it should be good. Now it's a I'm good a strat, though. They go down quite fast. I'm I'm a bit curious here. Rakesy and uh, Rice Cup. Do you have your teams planned out? Like, who are you guys playing with as well? Um, uh, yeah, I'll let you, okay. Uh, so I was basically, I, I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do group Iron Man, to be totally honest with you, because I just, I, I've never really played Iron Man. Like I have a hardcore, but I've never, I've just AFK'd it. Like that's all I've done on it. I've never properly Chill. jumped into it. I'm too busy on the main. And, um, I, I think I got like seduced to be totally honest, because oh. uh, <laughs> a few of my, a few of my friends on discords, like they're just normal RuneScape players. We're talking about Group Iron Man, and uh, they started saying stuff like, "Oh, we really need somebody that would just smash out LMS to get us some early gold." And I was just sat there thinking, "Oh my god, this sounds so good." And then they were like, "What? What should be our first goal? Like maybe we could go for like Corp or something." And I was just like, "Oh my god!" I was like, "I'm in, I'm in." Yeah. So um, yeah, it, it's just a bunch of friends from my my Discord. Uh, none of them are like content creators or anything like that. So okay, yeah. So oh, you're, yeah. you're sweaty, but you're not going to be going, like, super yeah. sweaty. Like, okay. I, I'm, prob awesome, I'm probably going to be the person who gets fed, I, I imagine, because they all, like, work full-time and, like, all have lives outside of the game. Whereas with me, I just I just play the game. 
I have all the time nice, in the world. Then. You just yeah, got yeah. basically RuneScape slaves on your team. Man. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to be your runecrafting. They're going to be runecrafting for you. They're going to get your supplies. <laughs> Rexy, hey, have That's some so food, please. They're going to be, oh, they're yeah. gonna be my humble oh, Lord workers. Rexy. <laughs> <laughs> bow down to King Rexy. I bring you good trout from the fish, from the lumber swamp here. <laughs> Very good. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a good time. I, I'm really, yeah, really yeah. buzzing for it. I can't wait. I, I so really as soon am. as you talk about it, it gets really exciting. Like Before, it's like, yeah, yeah. group, I'm in, and then you start talking about the plans. You're like, this is getting real now, you know? Wednesday, yeah. you know, you're getting pumped. Yeah. Let's go, go hard. Oh, real quick, what time does it come out? Is it 11 a.m. BST? 11 a.m. They want to be on the dot list. Like they want to be. Yeah. yeah, they're yeah. going to put down the servers. At, I think it was 9.30 BST they're looking to. So the servers will be down for like an hour and a half. They want to make sure it, you know, loads up nice and good. Mod rock announced that today on twitter and he was like right we want to get these servers down make sure it all goes smoothly open up on 11 on the dot and you know go ham awesome nice yo rice what's your team by the way do we know any of those guys yeah yeah uh, before i say anything uh so you're gonna rush lms you, you know your account needs to be a uh, 40 hours play time Ooh. yeah yeah well well here, you so. can actually you can do lms uh, even if you haven't well, got can't that, get the you rewards. Just, you can't yeah. claim the rewards. So I'll probably do uh, a ton of LMS, then go do some agility and basically work on the steps towards Lizardmen Shamans you, and stuff like that. It'll be fine. Could, It'll work out. Could yeah. you just do 40 hours of LMS and then claim the rewards? <laughs> I mean, dude, I, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll say this, right? So I, I did work it out. I did one hour of LMS. I lost one game. And in gold from <laughs> selling the rune arrows to the general store works out to be about 650,000 gold pieces per hour. That's oh, if you try. Yeah, th that's if you can that's win good, almost good. every single game of LMS. Which, not to toot my own trumpet, yeah, no, that's but a racy I, I, thing. I, I can smash it if I really want to. So I'm gonna be like properly. I'm gonna be yeah. hard. Like really you're the man hard. to do it. Yeah, you're the man yeah. to do it. Definitely. Can you imagine the whole Daily of Arsenal. Iron Man? Population is just slamming LMS the first week. So you're oh, just that's gonna be good then. then. Hey, it's a good PvP update then. The PK is <laughs> well happy. <laughs> it's a PvP update. I mean, it's not as likely the world does, but hey, it's uh, yeah. a step in the right uh, direction, you know. You Imagine know, like, the plot like, twist. <laughs> they like Rixy, like you, you'd be a great asset for any team early on because you just generate the revenue, you know, like super yeah. early on. Oh, I mean, cash, there, money, yeah. money. There is one issue with this. Now, I obviously, I imagine there's a lot of people that will be doing the same thing. And um, yes. <laughs> this this plan basically all relies on being able to sell those rune arrows to a general store. And with like the huge influx, I imagine, of all these group Iron Men playing, those general stores might be sold to like every single second of the day. So, I, I mean, to be honest with you, just talking about it now makes me feel like maybe I should just stay online for 40 hours and be like one of the first accounts able to sell those rune arrows. Like that, that might pay off, but... I'm gonna be like dead by the end of that forty hours. We'll we'll see. We'll see. Well, well, you can always sell even if it hits like a crazy number. You know, like you're talking about money for minimum price, right? Per item. Um, so it should be okay if it's that. So if we want optimal money, I think it's like it's best to sell like ten arrows per world. Oh, dude, that would take forever yeah. though. Why are you I looking to sell Which yeah. general store? Because there's general stores with like high out value, yeah. like the in the wilderness, right? But that's yeah, you know, risky. You doing so, hardcore or standard? Uh, so there's obviously that one. There's the one which is in Karamja, and there's also yeah. the one which is in um, West Star Doyne. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right. th yeah. those are like the three I have to choose. I mean, worst case scenario, I can always just sell them for like way cheaper. Like if you sell if you sell ten rune arrows to one of those shops, you get about two thousand gold. If you sell fifty, you get four thousand gold. So there's like That's a really big good difference. Sign out. That's really yeah. good. Yeah. It, it's still mm -hmm. really good, even if you sell fifty at a time. Like it, it, I'd say it's better than doing pyramid. If you know how to do LMS, if you can get those guaranteed points per hour, like it, it's going to be hopefully smooth sailing. But selling the arrows is an issue. The only other option is to elk them, which mm, again, no. it's like that's something we don't want to do because that will take such a long Nature time. Nature runes early on, not going to no, happen. No, yeah, no. not going to happen unless you're literally mm. spending the gold to buy more nature runes. Like it ain't yeah. going to work out. Yeah. Sounds like a fun strat though. Like you ain't gaining. It. There's a downside of it. You're not getting any stats doing LMS, but it's fun. You know, yeah, if you're doing a gilly pyramid, you're getting levels, which is quite nice. But to be fair, you probably just want to do rooftops anyway, don't you, for the graceful? That yeah, early yeah. on is yeah. so strong with the question. I, I mm. think it's like, it, it's kind of like, even if we can't sell them initially, it's like over time we will be able to. And yeah. it definitely, like, worst case scenario, we'll just have to sell them for less than we could get. And it's like, we're, we're going to need that money anyways. And it's like, we can get more LMS points. It's not a biggie. Yeah. And it's it's only like for the... I'll probably aim to do like so many games per day, so many wins, so many points. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Maybe like 100 points a day. Yeah. But like, it, it, like the other thing is, 
the LMS shop is uh it's not only about Rune Arrows, like they also sell Dragon Ball Z, okay? And Ooh. we're gonna be using those to go and kill Zami with Rune uh, really, Yeah, that'll be you really know? powerful. Does yeah. the Zami does the um Dragonstone even proc on Zami? I feel like it would because he's not immune to Dragon Fire, is it? I think so, yeah. yeah. I, I think it would. I, it does on Armadil, so I, I assume oh, it would yeah. do as well. That would be quite strong with like Three, four guys, yeah, all pounding the Zami yeah. with, you know, Dragonstone oh, bolts. Damn. Dude, like, I will tell you our plan right now. Just don't steal it, dude, please. So, <laughs> Everyone's going to steal it. I just want to say, oh, this podcast is great. I'm just coming to this, stealing all the nice strats from the pros. It's oh, like, fantastic. Um, <laughs> basically what we're going to do, a little bit of LMS, train the stats. So I'm the only one on my team doing LMS. Everyone else is going to do their own thing at the same time. We're going to go to Lizardmen Shamans. We're going to get a lot of range levels, HP levels, etc. Once we get one Warhammer, we're going to Zami. When we go to Zami, we're going to aim to get at least three Zami Spears. Hopefully five. We'll see how the RNG is. And then as soon as that's done, we're, we got to do a few little things here and there, like Dream Mentor to do ever to do uh, spec transfer. We need one account that's going to have spec, um, you know, like the bowl in your house that you get your spec and prayer and stuff back. We want to get at least spec back from that. I, I think it's like 83 construction we need or something like that. We'll figure it out. Um, also, the LMS gold's going to help with those planks. Just We, we thought about yeah. this a fair bit. It's a bit rough, but we're getting there. And then basically just kill Corporal Beast until we get ourselves, you know, a sigil and a whole spirit shield set. And uh, I haven't really thought about what we'll do past there, but, you know, that that's it. It's quite basic. It's just like we'll have to see how it works out when we actually mm -hmm. start doing it, you know? I'm sure there'll be some bumps in the road along the way. You know what, though? You'll get to, you know, the end of that court completion, and I guarantee another goal will pop up. Like, you'll be oh, yeah. inspired by what other people are doing. And like, we've got this sigil now, you know, we can work yep. on the next big goal now, you know? I feel yeah, like that'll I, be the perfect transition. I, I really do think so. Uh, the only thing for me is that I have an incomplete main series where I'm so close to the end of it now. It, it's like, I, I'm going to play Group Iron Man. I have to. I'm buzzing for it. I'm going to complete the sigil goal. And then as soon as I'm done, I need to hop back on the main and I need to finish the series up. And then I'm just going to probably just go all in on Group Iron Man after that. But like, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Because if I absolutely love Group Iron Man from the start, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really hard to go back to doing, you know, like I, at the moment I'm killing Corrupted Gauntlet, uh, hard mode for Sony, and uh, occasionally a bit of raids on the main to make money. And I need about four to 500 mil to complete the series. So it's like, I don't know what, we'll, We'll see. We'll see. That's just like a couple of lucky drops at first, Sunny, though, isn't it? Yeah, A couple yeah, of lucky no. drops there, maybe a big raid drop. Yeah. It's all orange at the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But those are the best pieces of content to try to get that four, five hundred mil, so. Yeah. Hopefully the orange comes through. Bless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for my plan, um, for the group, I have two other people, so, you know, we're trying to keep it compact. It's, it's really hard trying to, like, set up, you know, five people on a daily basis, to be fair. So I think three is 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 quite a you know quite a good good um, uh, group size. So I have uh, Fuse and Mutz, and they're they're both like hardcore remake Andy. So these guys oh, are they're like, sweaty. You know, they know they're, the early game guys, strong. These guys are like you know the young twenties. They're they're like buzzling. They got energy. They got you know you fold. They just know how to grind like crazy. So I'm I might be the one chilling for the most part. Right. But uh, you want my minions. <laughs> yeah, yeah the but, um, here, just chilling, <laughs> doing these one, one, of, <laughs> one of them is probably go going to rush gauntlet because I, I think Mud's already done a lot of gauntlet on, on his uh, on his hard course before, so I think he's feeling pretty confident to do that. And I'm probably just gonna go ahead and like rush Slayer or something, so I can you know get them some whips and tridents and whatever, and do some Zora for those you know items. Um, yeah, and the other per there's we're gonna be funneling like all our supplies to one person for like herbal training because we're gonna try to hit up rates in like I don't know a month or something because we want to do like something in a week, big. bro. I don't know. You can do man, it in a week. Come on, I don't man. know. A week, yeah, dude. This we'll is see, like, like twisted leagues, man. Yeah, it's not Rice, twisted leagues, man. Yeah. Dude, not twisted Rice league. knows every step of the raids. Are you kidding me? He just needs protect prayer, and he's good. Yeah, and he's like, like, dude, like if you're Russian Trident, everything you'll have everything ready to go. Like whips and Trident, yeah, you guys yeah. can just go and do right. Like, you scout the easiest raid ever. That's the thing. You yeah, can scout yeah. easy raid. Well, like we we were trying to do some before the you know before we even get those things. It's just that like in my long term, you know, obviously, you, ideally, if you want to do raids long term, you don't want to do Ibans, you know, or some, no, something something no, dumb. Yeah. Like, but like, yeah, like we, we, we do have some short term rush plans for golf, I mean, you know, for raids, but like, you know, I'm, I'm thinking a bit more long term there. I think I could probably get there in a month or something with all these like, you know, Slayer updates nowadays that makes things a lot faster. Like I, we can Definitely. probably do it. 
but really, you know, I'm only planning for this first month because, you know, League's coming out, right? We'll, we'll talk mm-hmm. more about that scuffness in a bit. But, like, but like, yeah, I, I think ultimately we are going for, like, a race rush. And then each of us are going to specialize in different uh, mid-content, like Gauntlet or Slayer or, you know, like, yeah, Herbal or Training, getting ready for, like, potions, yeah, overloads and stuff like that. It's the thing about raids, like, all you need is a guy who can make the top bruise. You can scout like a raid. Exactly. One you know, person. the overload, mutadile, yeah. boom, you're good to go. You just need one person uh, to funnel for 78 or below, pretty much. Or, or 77, you know, for, like, stu- uh, Green Man's Ale, you know, something That's so doable. That. Like, my strat back in the day when I first built this Iron Man, I just sat at Chaos Druids the entire time and just <laughs> found these radars <laughs> and just rushed stamina's and went to Sarah, like, at Nighty Combat. It was great. You know, I was running around yeah. at Nighty Combat with Sarah over Godsword, you know. So um, it's def- definitely doable. Like seventy eight is not that hard at all. Like that's yeah, what, that's because you have three people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've three got people, three people right? as well. Definitely everything. If you and really if I, smart about it and do herbrands exactly. as well, all in a rotation. Imagine yeah. the amount of XP you get. Yeah, yeah. Like definitely one of us will rush layer and and just you know accumulate as many seeds as possible and you know just farm the crap out of them. You know, maximize those. Yeah, definitely for sure. Now, but yeah, that's um, kind of like my rough plan. Mm. You guys have some pretty sick plans. Curtis, you said you guys, uh, you, Fo, and Mamla are going to start separate paths and then meet yeah. together. What What is your path for the start of this? Okay, so uh, I'm a big hunter fanatic. Like, I love starting up my accounts with the good old know. gym fields, oh, yeah. a bit of implings, you know. So I would love to, uh, you know, just hit up the implings again and get some easy money together, get obviously the glories going. Um, Obviously, they put in some stuff now where you have to get a quest done before box traps. So Eagle's Peak is on the cards. Uh, mm-hmm. So realistically, just a little bit of a quest run at the start, I reckon. Ardy Cloak, bang that out for some nice teleports. Get the uh, fairy rings done as well. Um, and then just, you know, hit up the chin field, start supplying the range levels. Because range early on is so strong, like safe spot, you don't have to worry about food. Bone can... crossbow. Exactly, bone crossbow mm-hmm. is the man. <laughs> that thing <laughs> in dead man is deadly. <laughs> you can find tonight, you know, I think, but... No, I think, um, yeah, the Hunter is going to be my strat, and then we're just going to be funneling supplies to one of our crafters or herbalists. I don't think we've decided those roles yet, but probably soon. Probably on the day, I reckon. So okay. I'm, gonna be like, I'm taking crafting. I want to sit there mining this sandstone. Yeah. <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty sick, man. Um, God, what was I going to say here? So we were talking earlier about that we need to get back to the subject of the, the scheduling, right? You got group Iron Man and then leagues. And so I think a lot of people are planning their group Iron Man to have a lot of AFKing during yes. leagues. Do you plan to get to an AFK spot? I would love to get to a stage where I would just... Uh, Anglerfish just seems like one of the best, isn't it? Just yeah. it's really AFK, really strong food for like late game. Obviously, early on, it scales on your HP, so not that good. But if you can get to a stage where you're farming like a resource, which you're going to use 100% in the future, then that needs to be the strat because leagues is what, like a month, month and a half long, six weeks. So you want to be, you know, doing this the entire time, even if it's just training one skill. So I feel like it's either going to be like AFK and collecting herbs somewhere or probably doing the fishing, to be honest. Yeah, because I feel like a lot of people right now are going into group Iron Man. I, I won't be playing it, sadly, but they're looking for strats. And right now I'm just trying to help them out <laughs> by, yeah. by giving you guys some questions so they can start building their own uh, yeah. path to success here. Do you, Rakesy, uh, Rice, do you have any strats for when leagues happens? You're going to AFK some grinds on the side. Well, I, if I may, real quick, uh, le- the leagues coming out and interrupting the group Iron Man schedule is actually a big part of our plan because I ain't playing <laughs> leagues, okay? I ain't touching it. I, I'm not a big fan of it. I know people love it, but it's just, it's not for me. I prefer dead man mode. Uh, so my hope is that when everyone is playing leagues, we're just going to get that far ahead. You know, we're just going to head <laughs> on. And uh, hopefully that's going to give us the time to like surpass all the sweaty, you know, players that are going to be smashing out the game mode. Um, but to be honest, like I, I would say the biggest piece of advice I could give is have them set a goal. Like, think of something that's so cool and just like, wouldn't that be amazing to get to super fast or try to be the first people to get it? Like, that's effectively like what me and my group have done. It's like, we're by no no means going to be efficient at what we do. We're going to be like the most inefficient group at doing anything, but we are going to be the most efficient at getting to where we want to go. It's like you're gonna look at our accounts, and we're probably gonna have like green, green dragonhide vams as our gloves. Like you know, it's gonna be scuffed as hell. But it's like we are on a clear path 
Like, we're trying to get this shit done. We might be inefficient in the grand scheme of things, but boy, are we efficient at doing this one thing. So I, I would just say, <laughs> have them set something they really want to do. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's just fun with the boys, you know? That's it. Exactly, yeah. Who cares about efficiency? Let's just have a great time jumping to this group I'm in thing. Green Day advancing up these shamans. Hell yeah. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's Agreed. what it's all about. Getting these people back and play for like eight years. I've seen so many people mention that they're getting their friends back and haven't played it just for this group I'm in, and I'm so excited for them. I'm like, yes. Getting these old players back. Yeah, relive that experience, man. Yes, you know, for the first the time. Band. All right, Rice, you're sweaty, man. You must have a plan for AFK leagues. What do you well, got? To be honest, I, I just go with flexibility. Like I, 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 I AFK all the time. I've AFK just about anything and everything. Uh, but like obviously, the easiest AFKs are gonna be uh, fishing, right? Because like it's good for PVM and it's really AFK. So if if um, we need more food, I'll probably do that. But but realistically, it could be also monster AFKing too, you know, like some Slayer mobs. Like, we need more resources, we need more money or something, then yeah, I, I would hit up that kind of, like, wyverns or something for AFK, you know? Okay. Or, yeah, yeah. There, it, just, it just depends on what the group needs the most. Like, I, I'd be able to find some ways to balance out, you know, between how AFK I need things to be, or like, or like if, it's, if I don't need things to be that AFK because I'm doing something super AFK on leagues or something, I can also do that, so... You know, kind of just, mm. yeah, just Not, picking at the right uh, variables there for the moment. Dude, so. Wyverns are going to be packed during leagues. Oh, Everyone is going to be that, doing yeah. them. I yeah. wasn't even, yeah. like, that is going to be such a strat. And Curtis, mm. you mapped out your beginning strat. You've made a lot of accounts over your time. Like, you do all the non-permanent game modes, mm. Iron Man, all this stuff. You probably have a really good quest route. Do you think you're going to be taking that quest route before you go skilling? Or what is that quest route if you're going to be taking it at I all? I think the biggest quest route you can really do on a new account is the Barrage Gloves route. Like, you want to plan out everything towards getting those B gloves. And now that you've got stuff like Tempros in the game, like, you can do uh, a mix of, like, you know, that for your resources and skilling and actually get, like, the 70 cooking requirement for um, the sub-quest for the Monkey Menace one as well. Just because of Tempros rewards, you're getting these coins on the side, you're getting all this food you can cook. So you can incorporate a lot of these new skilling bosses as well. And I think that's why the Winner Todd Rush is quite strong for people, just because it's easy. And also you're getting all these resources towards the quest. So realistically, if I'm doing a quest race, you know, any quest towards that Barrow's Gloves, I think mm -hmm. it's going to be the best. That's like your mid game. As soon as you hit that, you feel like you're in the mid game. Then you do your Slayer grind and you do your crafting and that's it. You start entering the end. Do you need quest guides or is it just all up there right now? Just from no, I mean, grinding. to be honest, like I've only ever redone quests on like these limited time game modes because I've been playing this one account for seven years. So really, my quest game is not that strong. But you know, you've got these OP, you know, plugins these days. You know, you got you got moonlight like, quest out there these days. You can just sit there. It's, it's like you need this item and this item. I haven't used it, but I'm very tempted to. To be oh, honest, you should. Yeah. honestly, use it. Use it. You I I think so yeah, because think about it. You're going to be bringing up a quest guide anyway. What's the difference? You know what I mean? Having exactly. it on the side. I'm on a laptop right now. I've got one screen. I need the limited space. So I'm going to have this. Like, I'm going to have this quest figure, but I'm just going to go. Um, Dude, it, yeah. Quest Helper, and for anyone listening, Quest Helper is like a plug in on Runelight. Um, it, it's so nice, especially if you're doing this on stream. So, like, I love the guy, Slayer Music, but instead of having to, like, watch that and have your viewers listen to it or even just having subtitles on, Quest yeah. Helper literally tells you, like, where to click and what to take like it's insanely <laughs> op like you, you don't even have to think man like you could probably get if you had all the resources you could probably get like a quest game in like god i reckon you could get it in like three days maybe i, I, I guarantee you smash it. people watching this i'm not gonna know about it and they're gonna be like wait there's a quest helper we're effectively advertising this quest helper to yeah. all of these viewers yeah. now i mean and they're gonna be legal. like okay let's go <laughs> it's legal so <laughs> It's yeah, legal, it just yeah, exactly. highlights the, you know, like it, tur it, it turns everything into like a big blue box and you just click on it. You're like, ah, wow. yeah. miss. you know, I did, um, so I, I did the final, I can't think of the name of it, but the, uh, the final elf city <laughs> quest that gets you to corrupted gauntlets. Song of the elves. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I did that. With, that's the one I did it with quest helper and it blew me away. I, I couldn't believe how easy that quest was without looking up a guide it like do you know when you get to the library part of it and you're in like a oh, massive that maze all directions. monster three floors oh dude it tells you exactly yeah. where to go like it just tells you where to go you don't even have to think and it's just like i was doing it and i was thinking man if i didn't have this on right now this would probably take me like twice maybe even three times as long I you mean, know? I did that quest day of release, no guide, and I oh, kid you not, I was, I was there for four hours trying to figure out that. It was bad. <laughs> oh, man, and, I feel bad for you, bro. Yeah. 
I mean, I had, um, I actually got the uh, pleasure to go to Jagus to test uh, that puzzle uh, for Song of the Elves. And we did like a blind run um, initially. So I kind of had an idea of where to go when the quest came out. But still, when you're doing it and you get to the last few, oh, there's that one at the end that just like the free floors and you have to bounce these yeah. lights around. It is mad. It gets go crazy. Through, like a bookshelf or some bullshit. Yeah. Oh, oh, that one is, that one is terrible. But. Mm. No, with Quest Alpha now, like that's why a lot of people are getting Questgate these days because it's just these plugins just make it so easy. And I'm starting to think, you know, is it starting to get too much now, or are people just going to look up guides anyway? You know, it's the same mm. with the Clue plugin. That thing is so OP, but it's been in Runelight since the beginning. Like that's one of the oldest plugins. Ew, but without yeah. it, when you know the servers go down and Runelight's not up, and I try to do a Clue, I'm just like, what do I do? What what is this coordinate? Like where do I go? I just no. feel like I can't play the game anymore. Yeah, that's GG. I think um. It's an interesting conversation, actually, because, you know, you hit on something really important there. It's like, how far is too far? Because the Quest Helper plugin was hugely debated by, like, the player base for a long time because there were a lot of people saying it hurt the game and it stopped people being able to, like, follow the uh, the storyline and stuff like that. And I was just wondering, like, what is your view on these plugins? Like, do you think that some of them overstep the mark? Or are they kind of just, like, they're, like, you know, they're flirting with the line. It's just, you know, they're just slightly going over, but they're still okay. I think it's just pushing the boundaries, really. Like, they're, they're trying to squeeze in as much as possible where it doesn't actually go too over the line where Jack's going to be like, all right, turn it off. Because I know at first they brought out, like, some Zalkana plugin, and it was time where the rocks would fall down and, like, all highlight and all that. And they took it away for a while, but then they obviously refined it, kind of made it a bit what Jagex wanted, and then they can bring it back in. So I think it's just about trial and error of figuring out what they can squeeze in without being too much in Jagex's bad side. But when it comes to like these clue plugins and the quest plugins, the reason why they sound OP, but really it's not that bad, is because you can just pull out a guide anyway. You know, wikis yeah. are a thing. The wiki pretty much says, go here, go here. So what's the difference between doing that or having it in front of you? It's a matter of conveniency, I feel. Yeah. Pretty it's much. not exactly doing the content for you still got to do it but it's making it brain dead and people like that when you're grinding thousands and thousands of clues for range boots these days like you don't want to be like oh I'll google this again you know you're gonna get burnt out like if it's just in front of you just grind it it makes it so much nicer and just enjoyable yeah mm -hmm. that's what people are used to now so i don't think it's necessarily a, a super bad thing yeah yeah i i think as well like you said like it, it's like an option to turn on exactly like, with, with quest helper it's not even like a default plugin you have to search for it in the plugin hub yeah so it's like it, there, there's that but like the way i've always justified it because it kind of does feel like cheating and when people are like you're missing out on a part of the game i'm like oh man i kind of am but all of the quests that i'm doing including the prifness quest i already already done. i'd already done but without yeah. quest helper so it, it's almost just like I, I already know it and i'm just trying to get through it fast especially if yeah. it's like you know a new account like group iron man or if you're playing dead man mode it's like bloody animal uh, what's it called what's the avas accumulator quest I'm an animal, animal magnetism I i've done animal that quest like a hundred times but like yeah. i always <laughs> forget something so it's like I, I just want that easy way of just you know i i don't feel like i'm cheating because i have no. already experienced yeah. you know the game and stuff so yeah. like if you want to really yeah. know the law you just look it up after you can look up the whole story now if you really want because the wiki's got all that as well but uh, on a first-time quest release, like, I, I love obviously going through all the dialogue and just doing like the voice acting with it. It makes a really fun stream, but I can see what you mean when it comes to like the second, third account of doing it. It's kind of like space bar time, you know, just get through this quest. <laughs> yeah, just get, yep. to the, get to the juicy part bar. of the content. Yeah. Get to the goal and <laughs> make the money. The rewards. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's me the first time doing it, honestly. Some <laughs> <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> people that are just like, yeah, I don't care about quests. You know, it's one of the most popular yeah. together. But yeah, speaking about the Rune Light plugins, probably a silly question, but do you have any favorite plugins that you use all the time or ones that you're going to use during the group Iron Man leagues, preferably? Mine would be Loot Tracker. Mine, that's my favorite. That one's great. Oh, easily. So you want easily. to know the best, the best one, though? For me, is Bank Tags. That thing is a lifesaver. And like when you have to gear up and gear down for content all the time, like in between clues, just having that tab there where it's like, here's all your items for the next boss. It's so good. Doing Slayer as well, jumping between Slayer tasks and just having that gear ready for, like, say, doing Zamorak and then straight into Rex. Like, it's so nice. Just not have to look for your bank. But I know a lot of people organize the bank in a way they can gear up fast anyway. Me, I just like to make it look nice. So for me, that plugin is everything. I can, mm, you know, yeah. go into that tab, just pick up all the items I need, and then I'm off in, like, two minutes. So that, for me, is one of the most useful. Definitely. Mm. Yeah, I can for see sure. that a lot. Easily. Yeah. I think the clue one as well is... Uh, extremely op like that's a uh, one of the most og ones but without it like you do clues probably two three times the length so i reckon that one and clue plugin is my favorites 100 percent. 
Yeah, that's the reason I can't play on the Steam client at all because yeah. I'm just waiting for these to finally come over. And for those who are using the Steam client, you'll know, props to you, but I need those plugins, man. I need the loot tracker. Mm. They're I trying though. They are they are bringing in these plugins now. I know they did a yeah. um, overhaul, didn't they, recently, where they brought in uh, like click boxes and timers and stuff like that. So it's good that they're updating it because they want to make the Steam client obviously quite popular for the new player base, just to get its name out there. Because Steam is a massive advertiser of the game. Um, but yeah, I, I'm glad that they're trying to you know trying to integrate these plugins now and working along with RuneLight to make it happen. Yeah, exactly. Right. We we had um we've had a few discussions actually about the uh, like Jagex's own plugins for a long time, um because obviously we have like an issue in our game right now with bots and so forth, and uh, it as far as we can tell, and we've been speaking to people about this stuff. A lot of these uh the bot clients and stuff are used with like the rune like uh, source and stuff along those lines. That's and, why they were going to shut down RuneLight, weren't they, at first? Because they yeah. had this open source code, you know, yep. that these bot plugin makers could actually see it and just go off it. So, yep, too late yeah. now. It's yeah. already out. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> <Oops. laughs> we thought about it a fair bit. And we were, we're kind of convinced, I guess, or at least I am, that the reason they're probably working on their own client is because in the future, the chances of them being like, hey, look, we have our own client. It's up to standard, up to bar with RuneLight. And it's like, we want everybody to come over now and start playing on our official client yeah. and um like by doing so it could I mean, i've heard people say it wouldn't work but it could effectively mean that you know if jagex are trying to find people that are using bot clients it, it's like if it's not the official runescape client it's like it's something fishy and they could very easily just be like look you can only use our official client to be able to like play the game anything else it's like you're gonna basically risk getting your account banned or just not be able to log in i think that's kind of like their goal yeah. that would be yeah. huge i mean yeah. that would be one of the best updates in terms of like eliminating the bottom community because it's probably still huge like you see these bots with these uh prime membership you know when they offer the seven days free you see all these bots running through pairing plunder you know it's absolutely crazy the amount that people can make because they can yeah. actually make a bot plugin to make bots it's like a whole little mm -hmm. factory going down there. It's crazy. It's like an army of robots, you know? Yeah. Um, Mothership. <laughs> exactly. It's like an alien invasion all of a sudden. <laughs> it's but, um, crazy. It's crazy. The thing is, RuneLight is just so far ahead of the normal client that it's going to be such a hard transition to actually make that happen. It'll like, take they, would a have while. To, they would have to bring in so many plugins for people to switch over. And it's, they'd have to offer more, to be honest, because people are very happy with what they're playing on right now, you know? You've got yeah. all these great features, and yeah, they, they, they can't keep up, honestly. I, I think at this point, it's like if they want to do that, if that is the vision they have, they kind of just have to collaborate with Roomlight and be like, hey, like, we, we either want to buy what you have or, like, have yeah. you at least come and work on our client to get it up mm -hmm. to par. Um, but I think that would, you know, it's a bit off topic, but I think, like, that probably would help. And I, I'm just trying to understand, like, if Jagex are working on their own client, like, there has to be, like, a long-term vision for why exactly they're putting resources into that when there's already a client which works and people are happy with. Yeah. It's like there there has to be something behind that other than just like we just want to do it, you know? Yeah, they want to wipe out their party client scene in the future for sure. Yeah. Hopefully. I mean, the yeah. Steam one's actually, you know, in C++, isn't it, rather than the uh, old kind yeah. of uh, Java. So I think that, that yeah, they're trying to get to that as well to make most of possible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, dude, we actually spoke about... I remember... I, I can't remember if it was a guess or it was a comment we had or a conversation I had, but somebody was saying with the RuneScape free client, it's very difficult to replicate because of the C++, like the actual client that's built on. Um, and I yeah, mean, if, also, if they did that... it's, it's just also RuneScape 3's code is not available publicly, you know? Yeah. It's like the, the, the thing with RuneLight was that they basically had RuneScape, like the game code, like for, you know, like a layman's term open source right yeah. so basically people you know could just copy it and then modify it however they want and hence all these like advanced botting clients and and you know crazy super cheap clients exist is because they open sourced it as as their like their appeal right what's uh, in my opinion was a really bad idea because what happens now is that um you know you, you're gonna have jagex gonna have to eliminate third parties in general because you know uh, because people are really stretching and really forcing what they can do with these clients every day you know so so yeah like it, it i think it's become kind of like a very noticeable problem like like people modifying you know when like clients to do like full sony nightmare botting and shit like that it's crazy yeah, dude, that. yeah. that's nuts. That, that is nuts yeah 
so so they have to like they don't have a choice anymore they have to like get their um steam client like up to par like soon you know like within the year or two and basically just stop any third-party clients from accessing the game because that's that's the only way pretty much so they're in a race against the bots is what you're saying kind of like a movie i mean yeah yeah. against the third-party client makers like the legal ones to be honest i i think the bots have already won that race it's like oh yeah dude (laughs) they're like past the finish line at this point but they got the trophy and shit I I saw Guns Chili tweet the other day. He said, um, there's something seriously wrong. I'm paraphrasing, but something like, there's something seriously wrong when the best moneymaker and end game content in game can so easily be botted. And he's talking about hard mode for Sony. It's like, if you go there, there will be a broken bot. There always is. There's always one. It's like a level 98. It has like a bludgeon and the most scuffed gear ever. Bizarre armor. Yeah, Bizarre, right? and it's just you just stood there, just <laughs> like, wait, is that f- is I'm like, is that beast trying to take on the hard mode for Sony? And I'm dying to it, like I'm 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 win trading against that boss. It's like a kill for a death, and that uh, everyone there is one of those. The spectator would be crazy just watching it run around, <laughs> yeah. just going. <laughs> the, 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 yeah, that's, that's the crazy. thing, though. It, it, it's like when it comes to bots, it's like every single boss in our game has a like route that it takes it's programmed to do yeah you know a, a, a variation of different attacks styles and so forth and, and it's like we are definitely far beyond that when it comes to bots and being able to detect those and simply being able to stand out of the way of those attacks or pray correctly and so forth like if you have a bot that's that advanced it's probably going to be a hell of a lot easier for the bot to know when to pray range or mage or when to step away from the the black uh, black holes that appear, and I'm talking about hard mode for Sony here for any of the viewers <laughs> listening. It, it, it's Sorry. like it, it's definitely like the, humans always make errors. I always walk into those black holes and they hit like a seventy, <laughs> but it's like so bots are programmed not to, and they know exactly where they're gonna spawn. And, and it's crazy because every single day I log into my account and my bank's dropped like twenty mil. And, and oh, you so, want to know what happened today? Dude, the whole armor set actually dropped 100 mil in Quizzer. So I reckon that's probably the effect of that, to be honest. Yeah, the Fasani really? bots. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah they dropped oh. 100 mil overnight last night. Are you serious? Wait, some. How, yeah. how much is it right now? Like, how much is it per piece? I think oh, the helm was less. like just under 100. Um, oh, skirt was 160, yeah. body like 130. So they have gone. Yeah. Down. Three, are you serious? Should I, yeah. should I take my oh. bulwarks and turn it into that? Should I do the biggest flip of all time? <laughs> Dude, baby. easy video for those those bots, baby. Yeah, and like the other thing, you. the other thing is, is it's an instance boss. So it's like <laughs> oh, if they're God. in there, you can't even see them. Oh, dude, I'm so I'm sad, man. Yeah. I've got a full set on my account. Like my account is specifically like the goal is to make max cash. You just lost money. Like, You've gone backwards. Oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Doing first side is the worst strat right there. You lose money doing it. You go and try like a 200, get like a Crazy. couple of bass drops. And then you get some inquisitor yeah. piece now worth 10 though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. crazy, man. So, yeah, you can see why they're like, you feeling the pressure of the, you know, the Steam mm-hmm. stuff that, that they're working on and, you know. They're, they're, they know. They know that there's going to be some real trouble going, going down the line with third party clients in general. Just because of the whole, the whole open source fiasco from years ago with Runelite, you know, yeah. Yeah. I used to I used to hate Runelite when it first came out because I'm like, I never used it. Yeah, I'm like, are you, are you crazy? Why would you open source that? You know, like, right? And the, and when they finally you know closed it, it was like, oh, wow. but it's like too late. It was way too late already. You know, yeah. it's, we're it's gonna see the there. after effects of that now. It's gonna be yeah, bad. It's already out, yeah, and you're seeing it. You know, like people making custom Fosani freaking bots on their custom real like clients mm-hmm. oh, God. and they can't well, even like detect that shit right away unless somebody reports it and then they actually get to you know like ha- happens you know circumstance see it right at that time and they're like okay okay it's a problem it's a problem you know so yeah yeah i mean yeah. It, it's Crazy. definitely a big issue like here's the thing like us free sorry sorry mintus matters we, we've oh, killed hard mode for sony so we know Wait. what that boss is like hey Hey, hey man! Dude, mate, we, hey. we took you to TOB the other day for the first time. Do not tell me you've been solo in hard mode for Sony, <laughs> bro. Are you just right in between New World, like again. in the servers. Quick post, Sunny kill. <laughs> He's yeah. AFK and a dude on the side. <laughs> He's running the boss. <laughs> oh my! God. I gotta man, buy more bulwarks. They're up, bro. I gotta keep stacking, man. That's anybody, how you do it. Anybody that's killed that boss, like we we know how hard it is. It's not an easy task. Kills are usually. 
on the fast side, seven minutes on the slow side, 10 minutes plus. Right. And it's yeah. like, if you're killing something, which you have to pay that much attention for that time, like you cannot take your eyes off the screen. You have to be there. You can't AFK. It's like, why would you do that when it's so rare to get a piece of armor, e.g. a drop that's worth something, and then the price of that armor is worth less, or at least it's worth a lot less than how you would deem it, because it takes so long to get. It, it's like, that that's the issue with botting fundamentally, I think, is that for the players who play a main account on the game, it, it's like, you can't expect them to work so hard for something when it's way less than it should be. And, and it's like, that's the consequence there. Like I, I wouldn't blame somebody for stopping playing the game because all the prices were so bad. It's like, I'm wasting my time here, you know? Yeah. It, it's a different story for an Iron Man, obviously, because it's more of like a personal achievement and you're not doing that boss for, you know, the financial incentive. It's more just like, I want to have full Inquisitor, which is awesome. But it's like, there are seriously serious effects. And, and I think that if Jagex were to ever like say, hey, look, we have to make this hard decision. And I hope they wouldn't pull it, I will add. And they were just like, look, we're just going to straight up make it so you can only use our client. I know it better be, be a, good, though. It better yeah. be good. There'd be a lot of outrage, but I, I think that for the sake and longevity of the game, I'd be I'd be for it. You know, I wouldn't put it down the line. That as a transition would be would be perfect. If that could yeah. actually stop the buying problem, but at the end of the day, like there's always people who are really smart with that kind of stuff, and then always think ahead of Jagex with the bot and stuff. So I think even if we were moving to the Steam client, like people would find a way around it or some or some. Yeah, it would be um, a massive step in the right direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah I maybe. agree. I agree. Um, speaking about the botting problem, uh, Curtis, how do you feel about it overall? Like, I know it's a vague question, but do you think Jagex is handling it properly? You were talking about how you had to do that quest for for box traps. That's one of the implements for botting. But they can now bot that quest. So what the hell is the purpose, right? I want to know what the actual process is because you know I see all these bots all the time, like Amethyst bots having like ninety six million mining. I'm just like, what's the actual process of someone reporting these bots and it actually getting banned? Like, what's the time frame of that? Is it months? Is it weeks? Is it like a thing where they just go over, you know, every month and like, okay, let's ban this list of bots? Because like, I see these, you know, banning J mods who do all the bot and stuff. You know, they tweet out like, oh, we banned like forty thousand accounts today. Like, how long did that take though? You know, how long were these accounts botting and what effect does that actually have on the economy? Because they're dumping all these resources. You know, they've already already slung the god and you know bought a stuffed crust, crust pizza for tonight. But um, <laughs> realistically, I think overall, like botting is just something that is very mysterious and. Obviously, if you know and you're ahead of it, like you're going to take advantage of that, aren't you? It's always a big thing because RuneScape Gold is such a, you know, great economy for, 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 for like the gold sites, you know. Yeah. Mm. I well, think now I'm... that the dual arena is getting banned, oh, right? yeah. everyone says that the people who buy the gold are the stakers. Who's going to buy all this gold now, right? If exactly. the stakers aren't going to be buying it, right? Is it just people who want to play the game want to get like a shortcut? I mean, you've got obviously RuneScape bonds, but. That's the whole reason of them trying to offer a good price for it. The gold's always going to try and undercut them. But then you've obviously got the risk of getting banned. Is there ever going to be a time where bonds are actually more worth to kind of eliminate, you know, getting banned at all? That'd That's be interesting, kind of, man. Yeah. That'd be very, do you have any thoughts on the Dual Arena ban, by the way? I know it's, uh, I, I don't know when it was released, but that's pretty big. That is huge. That is massive. I mean, they've got a lot of gold sinks these days. I think one of the biggest ones was obviously the death mechanics now, bringing in a gold sink. That was the whole idea, I feel. They had the Dullery there initially to start bringing out gold, but now over time they've added in like the death mechanics, you know, all kinds of bosses that get rid of gold. Obviously, recently with Zora after 50 kill count, now it t you know, takes 100k each time. So I feel like they're trying to move away from just, you know, the gold sinks from Dullery now, and they know it's a massive problem to do with real world trade. They just want to eliminate it. Otherwise, they wouldn't have brought it up. People know it's been a problem for a long time, and um, I feel it's just a step in the right direction, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, agree. I, I think it's definitely a step in the right direction. Um, we, we was it us boys? We had a conversation about this and why they removed the Doodle Arena, or am I getting we mixed did. up with my own chat? I think I'm yeah. pretty sure we talked to Kemp Q, who's been very, very forward of banning the Doodle Arena. He makes those amazing videos that get tons of views and shows the scammers. And sadly, there's been no response. But now RuneScape has just banned it. I don't know, which is great, but it almost feels like why, why not? earlier but at least it's coming in now right yeah because there's been Eventually. a lot of problems so i Eventually. believe we have spoke to camp q about that pretty hard we, we will do um i remember hearing something a little while back i can't remember if it was a camp q video 
or if it's just a conversation I was having. But there was um, a bit of speculation that part of the reason they may be removing it, because as far as I'm aware, whenever they've been asked in the past if they'd remove it, the answer has always been no. Uh, but all of a sudden, that tune's changed. And um, one, of my, one of my friends said that it could potentially be because of the new laws that are coming in for like online gambling. Um, which is to do with streams that do, you know, like slot streams and the gambling yeah. sites, and also video games that have like built-in loot crates or some kind of gambling. Um, like I just, just a fault. Like it, it could be that because, like, when I think about, it, I'm just like they've always been very adamant that they wouldn't remove it and that it was kind of a non-issue, and then all mm -hmm. of a sudden for it to just randomly be on one of their, um, one of their Q and As, they just randomly drop. We're eventually going to be getting rid of it. It's like. What's happened? And it might have even been the... It wasn't the Mod Matt K one where we uh, he said that. But I remember him saying, like, um, you know, he put... Uh, I, I think he said that he had, like, a test put out where he had some professionals to come in to look at people that were, like, addicted to people that were addicted to staking at the Doodle Arena. And he said that he had left before the results had actually came back. But that was going to determine you know, the outcome of the doodle arena and how they should deal with it. And may maybe those results came in or I, I, I think it'd be really interesting to know like why Jagex have actually made this decision just kind of out of the blue. Cause I yeah. feel like there was no lead up to it unless I've missed something here. I, reckon I mean, you could build up to be honest, like over time, I reckon it was a massive thought process that has finally come to this conclusion. Yeah. 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 You can visually see on, on Twitch, these debt streamers, for those who don't know, it's just people who go to the door arena, borrow money from their viewers and say they're going to pay them back. And the amount of debt that's actually been racked up is tens, twenties, 200 plus billion. Now that's a house. If you think about that, right. not, not in like a lot of good cities, but that's a, that's a decent <laughs> house in like maybe Florida or maybe Alabama or something, man. And honestly, you could see these people owe so much and they're never going to pay it back and they're just constantly just scraping and i don't know if debt streamers would be a good topic since we are on the on the uh, process of talking about staking or not um curtis do you have any thoughts about the debt streamers i mean it's definitely a problem i mean i'm just feel sorry for them because where's their content going to go after during it goes you know and yeah. i think the biggest thing as well is off this you know what's going to happen right. to you know gambling and runescape is there going to be people doing unofficial like staking now? Because obviously they want to move somewhere. Are they going to host like unofficial like duels where they just slash each other in the wilderness and like have <laughs> gold on them now? Or have yeah, like a middleman standing there? I reckon that's going to be a uh, thing. Yeah. Yo, but, rap pits yeah. is going to be the new place. Yeah. <laughs> There's going to be a thing that replaces it. And I feel like it's going to be kind of a bad thing about removing the Dual Arena because if you think about it, Dual Arena kind of offers a safe place for people to just, you know, throw their gold in. It's run by the game, you know, and whoever wins, wins. There's no way around it. But there's going to be so much scamming happening now with these probably clans that are going to like host these stakes and they're probably going to take money, have a middleman, and these guys are just going to go all out with these whips and these TDSs at each yeah. other. It's going to, uh, to be fair. Movement. To be fair, if you participate in those, that's really your fault, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like, the, thing with, Duel, test. <laughs> the thing with Duel Arena is the fact that, like, you know, people can stream it and it's official. So all their viewers are like, whoa, I want to be a part of that too, you know? But once they get, you know, nerf it or, or, or get rid of it outright, then they, they don't, it's, it's harder for people to get into it because they don't, they can't see it, you know? Yeah, that's true. So which it's which is, like, I think the biggest, like, positive thing is that yeah you, you don't get to you know innocent people don't get exposed to this bullshit Absolutely. and they can just play the game and enjoy the game you know yeah, yeah. can uh, you imagine a debt yeah. streamer just at the rat pits or waiting on someone to do like a, a flower and they're just streaming it and they're like oh there goes two bill it was a red flower not a yellow <laughs> like, uh, oh the next big ruling coming in the games room is popping you know that thing's empty all year round suddenly just see all these stinking streamers ruling in for these fucking pieces oh, God. <laughs> man I, do you know i recently uh. i recently had a conversation about that actually because i was like if they do remove the doodle arena it, it's like there has to be some like I feel like more issues will occur if there's nowhere safe to go and gamble your money because there's mm -hmm. obviously a lot of people that enjoy doing it whether it is just like either for fun an addiction or if it's for like real world trading but it's like I, I had this idea I was like imagine if they turned the games room into just like a massive like almost like a casino in a sense where you can go in there and you can stake your money but you're staking it like versus. 
Actually, to be fair, it, that if, would it, be worse, but that'd dude, be great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah dude, that would I be just terrible. Realized, I just realized yeah, I was just cut. Right. <laughs> may, may, maybe it's like you could convert your money into tokens, and then you get like a Ooh. prize at the end of it, and you get like some cosmetic. I don't know. That wouldn't work. Cosmetics at all good. Forget what I said. Forget. I, it's just yeah. because. I, I watched um, Asmund Gold play Final Fantasy. I don't know if you watch Asmund Gold, but um, there's effectively like a casino in that game where he went to, and it's like you paid money to play like a game, and it was loads of mini games that were like super fun and addictive to play, like like shooting ducks, but it was like a Final Fantasy version and stuff like that. And I just thought, I guess, I guess that would be cool. But uh, no, on second thought, I think that's a dumb idea. Just don't listen to me. <laughs> It was a good idea initially. That is like, okay, this is good. Heading <laughs> to the go. dark area now. I yeah, realized but... what I was saying. I was like, yeah, this ain't going to work. You know what? <laughs> Just bring in chess into old school RuneScape. I think they've had a concept for it. Bring in chess. Like, hey, people can start getting IQ. And... Yeah. That'll yeah. be good. That'll be a good game to bring in. I yeah. think uh, I think it is a really valid concern, though, to think, like, yeah. what will happen to people that, like, have that safe way of gambling. People will 100% go to PvP in the Wildy to gamble that money. But then it's like, there's going to be so much scamming where it's like, hey man, me and you were going to do a DDS stake in level two wieldy or level one wieldy. And then all of a sudden, and like someone's going to log in and like That's call them fault. out or something. It, it, it's like, there's a lot of issues with that. And also an, another thing that I would like to see personally is if they are going to remove the Deuterina staking, then um, it would be nice to have something like back in the day, back in pre-OC, we had the Deuterina, it was like a tournament where you could do like go in for like a two mil bracket and you'd oh, have a hybrid. So you'd have like, yeah, you remember that Curtis, like you'd have yeah. a hybrid set yeah. you'd fight against someone else. The person with the divine always won. And it was usually spark Mac because he was rich as hell <laughs> from staking. But like cool. if something like that returned, I think that would be, it'd be nice. Like it I, I, would, I, it would. There but needs here's to be, the thing. Yeah. Like it would be an issue with players though. Cause for that, you need like a good amount of players. The reason why it worked with streamers is because they could be like, you know, viewers come in, and play with me you know and it's the same with lms like sometimes the uh lms is dead like back in the day before they moved it to like this official wilderness place now used to be you know never have any players there so i feel like it'd be a good idea but it's just finding the people you know you like what 40 yeah. people for a tournament back in there yeah. yeah so so there's a there, there these are some real um there's no like you know obvious answer which i think it's it's good to kind of like amongst us decide what, what makes the most sense right so you could outright get rid of staking period or yeah. you could limit how often a, a player can stake and how much a player can stake i'm pretty sure yeah, that's what, the that's what they're going for and they're going to do right? the limiting thing first then they're going to look to remove it so yeah. i think that's actually the strat they're looking to do but i wonder yeah, what the limit going to be hmm. i feel like a limit is overall the best because yeah. because like i don't really see anything wrong with people you know coming together to to risk fighting each other for some profit right what i do see wrong is when people like say they get mad or they get bored of the game and then they stake their entire bank in once yeah. in two seconds it's gone like that's it's what i see a problem with because it's so self-destructive i don't really see a problem if someone's like oh yeah let me just stake five mil you know win or lose right because like yeah it hurt but like it's not like oh i just lost my entire bank what do i do right yeah. can you imagine like, though like that becomes a daily for a main account that is like oh better go do my daily stake for, for my yeah, bank. yeah like, I, that's, that's a weird I, concept I think, yeah that's not too bad right because <laughs> like funny. at least you don't ruin your entire account you know like yeah. some people are very self-destructive and if you give them the option to do it they will fuck 100%. themselves up oh, like, that, and, that, and you don't want them to do that because it'll really hurt them because you know yeah. mental health nowadays are not good you don't want people mm -hmm. Just chucking I mean, the entire bank just because they can. Like, is, maybe, is there maybe, any other game that no. you can just chuck your whole bank? Football? Yeah, no. Like, like, yeah. That's not that I can be think of. Risk is mean, hard. Like, I mean, this is the game yeah. we're talking about where you could die and lose all your items in a second. It appears to everybody else, you know. People used to yeah, lawyer drums. Yeah. Like, there used to be some poison plants pop up and start biting you. And yeah. kill it. I'm trying to pest control everyone just everyone runs to your stuff. Like, this is a savage game you think about it. Like, it's become yeah, very yeah. nice and, and over time, we, you know. Bro, and then yeah. we loot people's dead bodies. Yeah, That's exactly. Like, this, like, this is crazy. pure savagery. Think about it. Like, we got brought up with this stuff. No wonder like, we turned out we to be great right? friends. We were great friends, but I picked up your obvious shoe. I'm not giving it back. So, yeah, you no. know, like we're friends, but when it comes to pixels, out. nah, pixels are my nah. friends. That well, I was fine, though. <laughs> I was thinking it's about this good. while you guys were talking about your long grinds. I'm like, what kind of game initiates such a long grind for each boss and so many bosses? 
Not to mention you got full loot PvP, and then you can stake your bank. RuneScape has got to be one of the most intense MMOs of all time, it and is. no, we all take it for granted, Man. or at least I do, because it's just so there's so much that no there, other MMO no even game. There, there, there's no game that matches like uh. the harshness intensity of old school RuneScape. It's like I, I've recently been watching Mika play New Worlds, and in three days he managed to get max combat level. Wow. And I'm just like, God, if you were playing group Iron Man, you'd be like, you if I pushed, you'd probably be like level 70, maybe level 80. And yeah. it gets so much harder. But um, yeah, I, I don't think there is. I think that's what's so special about old school RuneScape. I think that's why there's such a dedicated community towards the game, because it's so freaking hard. Like the reason people don't quit RuneScape is because they haven't completed it. And like, yeah, there aren't many can't. people that ever, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like in you unless can't. you, Unless you plan to be like Zazima or like Suomi or something like that and just get absolutely max 200 mils and all items. Uh, which actually, a question for you, Curtis. You are a madman when it comes to grinds. Is there ever going to be a point when you consider your main Iron Man account completed? Or never, are you just going to go for all 200 mils? Like, wh what's the game until plan the, there? Until the day he dies. <laughs> so, all 200 mils, not really my forte, but with the amount of like content Jagex brings out with like PVM, by the time I finish items, like they bring out new items. Like, they just announced next with potentially six items. They've got raids free, bringing an eight. So, I can't keep up. Plus, you've got all these pets as well. And obviously, you've got these limited time game modes happening, these dead mans, and now you've got group Iron Man. So realistically, like, I don't think I'd ever could finish. It's always something I can go back to and just work on it. But on the topic of, like, obviously thinking how, you know, unique RuneScape is, like, you can't ever imagine it dying because there's nothing that's competes with it. There's nothing at all like, out there that kind of matches on the same level that old school. That's why it's continued on the way it does and why, it, you know, will always prosper, I feel. That, like, what's going to kill RuneScape in the, in the longevity? I think is RuneScape, the only thing that could kill it is itself, honestly. Exactly, like, it's just going to be bad updates, but... With the amount of like dedicated JMods there I know who have been players before and actually working on it, and with the amount of communication we've got, because you've seen the whole fiasco with like HD coming out, and yeah, we thought it weren't going to happen, and then obviously they listen to the players and they actually, you know, come to some sort of agreement and a compromise. And um, I feel like as long as they keep that level going, where they just you know keep listening to the players, then um, yeah, it's going to do really really well because these updates over the next twenty twenty two look amazing. Yeah, like some of the biggest in years. Like obviously we've had a very quiet maybe a couple of years, but. You've got to consider that like, maybe not being in the office with COVID as well. It's got to be a factor. Yeah. Bring out hard absolutely. modes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we, we've we had JMods on this podcast and like, it, it seems very clear that, you know, them not being in the office and being able to just look over the desk at like Mod Ash or whoever one of the mods is there and just be like, hey, is this okay? Whereas like now it's like an email chain and there has to be a back and forth like that. I, I think that it definitely has slowed things down. Um, but you're right. There's so much exciting stuff to come out. We got raids free group Iron Man. We got Twisted Leagues, which you guys like, which is very good. I'm I'm happy for you guys. Hopefully, uh, a demo it's for skilled players, Rexy. Sorry, oh, man. I see. Vacation <laughs> players, yeah. dude. I just like I I don't know, man. I I was always a PKer back in the day. So like for me, Dead Man Mode is like king, you know. Yeah. And I just the ex I've never been a skiller and. I, I don't have like a skiller mentality. It's like I enjoy PVM because I get nice, nice, pretty drops on the floor. And Those I enjoy lights PVM. now you get all the yeah, It's like woo, <laughs> these it's, lights, big bro, light, let's go. <laughs> if yes. the XP drops had like like a shine on it, like you know, like a purple cox chest, I'd probably yeah. be all about it. But like oh, I don't know, <laughs> it's just it's just not for me. But we do we do have a lot of really cool stuff that's coming out. We we truly do, and I think um. Like even next, next has just been thrown in there, and they're also repolling the divine. Did you guys know that they're repolling? Well, the fourth oh, time, I, I can't believe it. Like they pulled that thing yeah. three times and it's failed. I mean, to be fair, last time it was like seventy-two point three percent because Spartan was pushing. He was like, "Boys, get this poll <laughs> vote. You know, vote yes on this thing." But, dude, he uh, almost got his way, dude. He almost I think it could actually happen this time, and that oh, means oh, oh, I've oh, got to go back to court potentially if they add it to that. Are oh, they going to do it? Court oh, hard mode. They're going to do a court hard mode. Like, Five cores. <laughs> Man, like Nex and Corp oh were synonymous to being like the best PVM or best player back in the day, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, like I think it makes sense because you know they're bringing Nex back, so they're like, let's bring back another iconic item from that same kind of like timeline, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's I mean, probably gonna pass, like they, for sure. They're they're I, pushing it. They have said though that they're not bringing back the old uh, Torva Pernix and Virtus from Nex, so. 
I wonder what items they are going to give. And I will add as well, I'm not against that in any way, shape, or form. I, I've always viewed it as like, people get really upset when Jagex sometimes take pre-existing content from RuneScape 3 and put it into old school. But I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with that. There's things on RuneScape 3 mm. that are actually very, very good and good content that we could actually benefit from. But like, I also... Yes. Dunge Dungeoneering, exactly. Um, <laughs> but it's like, you know, if they want to recreate things and work on the rewards that they feel like need touching up, I think that's a good thing. Because I played all the way through pre-EOC and like in hindsight of next coming out, Tor of Apernix and everything like that, that armor set was effectively like part of the evolution of combat. Oh, it, it, it's, you it know, the fact, it, it did. It hmm. was the first armor in the game that allowed your HP to go above, I believe it was like 120 at the time. Hmm. I, I can't remember if it's a rock. Well, yeah, you could be like 140 or 150, if I remember. Yeah, That's with ridiculous. the full set, you could far surpass that HP. And that was all to do with the evolution of combat and RuneScape 3. And I think that, to be completely honest, that armor set doesn't necessarily fit within old school RuneScape. And oh. the fact that they're saying that it's not going to be that armor, I think that's a good thing. I, I just think it'd be very interesting to see what they put in its place. Did but you they're see looking no new melee armor, aren't they? The new melee armor they're definitely going to try and do. I think they can fill the gap for that. Also, it's going to be better than Bandos, probably. Yeah. In Dude, some ooh, way, shape if, or form. If they bring out a new melee armor, though, it's like we have Inquisitor for Crush, we have Bandos for Stab. Time. A, would a that slash one, with, you think? Would that fit in with uh, Nexa? Because Nexa is obviously quite a level boss. I feel like that would be armor that yeah. would maybe be like... a 30 defense again, you know, maybe somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. I think it's actually just going to be straight up a better Bandos. Yeah. Okay. Would you guys like to see an attachment to Bandos or just straight up, straight over it? I feel like we don't really need to have I'm an indifferent. attachment anymore. I'm indifferent, to be honest, because, like, let's say they make Nex that much harder and it's, like, you know, that hard, right? And that And that rare then Bandos prices should be okay because it's not Sorry. necessarily a replacement, you know, yeah. right, at all. And it's Bandos, is all, it's already a really solid armor set. It's like, look at what you can hit right now with that with that armor. I feel like it so, can't cap anymore. Like, the prices are already pretty reasonable. Like 20 summit mils, not that much these days. You've got these drops that are like hundreds of mils. You can buy like 10 sets of Bandos now. So I don't think it's really going to affect it. The yeah. perfect move. So, so as long as the the new next items stay a really high price compared to Bandos, then it sh they shouldn't be substitutes, like you know, direct substitutes for each other. So it mm. shouldn't really affect the price that bad. As long as we yeah. got no next bots going on, like we see these next bots number ninety running with their plungers again. It's like, yeah, move up for first sunny next now. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, okay. uh, they just announced actually one of the next items. Did you guys see that? No, oh, no, no I no, missed that. What? Oh, breaking no, no, news. No. Yeah, yeah, it's a handle, a one-handed handle, and you put it on the bulwark, and you can wield the bulwark with one hand. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, All right. I see what you're doing. I see. Dude, Dude imagine if the... I believe you for a second. Then. Man, the, bul the bulwark, like, hey, listen, man, I'm going to inflate the price of the bulwark a little bit more, okay? Next, back in the day, uh, admittedly, I never killed it, but I did see a lot of people doing it, and uh, the divine was a huge piece of killing that boss because that boss did a lot of damage. Now, with a bulwark being as tanky as it is, and now being like a half decent damage dealing weapon, it it could it could be good. Who knows? Well, you can't do both at the same time, though. Just just flick in between, you know. That's a strat. Yeah. yeah. Flick on the bulwark. Flick back to your crossbow. That's a strat, you know. <laughs> now, needs to be done for the big boy so. drops. When there's a billion on the line, that's it. That's what needs to be done. Speaking of all these new things coming into RuneScape right now. <clears throat> we were talking about this before the podcast, actually. A really good conversation about how Jagex is inviting all these content creators, not in the RuneScape community, but oh. they're familiar with it. Um, Curtis, what are, what are they doing? Or what are they inviting them over for? Are they going to play RuneScape? Or are they just, is there something going on? Is there an event? I'm not sure. I just know there's a All bunch of big say, games. This is huge for the game. I mean, the names that they're bringing in, like these guys, pull, you know, tens yeah. of thousands of views, even I've just streaming, just chatting. Guys. Yeah, they are huge and they have massive presence on social media. You know, they can put out a tweet with a smiley face and get 200k likes, you know. It's absolutely <laughs> insane the people they got on. So I feel like it's going to be great. Uh, I've heard rumors of them actually uh, having a world where it's going to be 10 times XP and they can just yeah. obviously... Uh, have fun with that and try to progress as fast as possible because otherwise you're seeing these guys maybe come on for like two hours doing you know low level agility and it won't be that interesting and it'll just be like loads of people following them around so i feel like this this private world is probably the strat to really advertise to the game you know only thing i'm worried about about that is their viewers are going to jump into the main servers and be like oh 
it's slow progressing and then just quick. Yeah, it's not the <laughs> same. <laughs> false advertising, exactly. But no, I think it's huge. I think the amount of print's going to bring to the old school category is going to be uh, amazing. Ex any exposure is good exposure. And this is a, yep. a good move. But I've seen a lot of people also uh, angry about it as well. Yeah, yeah they're kind of insulted about maybe not uh, giving praise to the current streamers that have been planning it for ages. But, you know, it's a, it's a big move by Jagex and uh, I really hope it works out. I've seen them do it before with like leagues, so it's not the first time they've really dived into something like that. Wouldn't really be a surprise. Yeah, my first TwitchCon, they were actually inviting people to a RuneScape after party, and they were just finding content creators who didn't even know about RuneScape. I had a following, they're like, you need to go, you yeah. need to go. So they are always constantly trying to poach people to promote RuneScape. Whether that's a good or bad thing, I think it's definitely a good thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, I also agree with those people like playing devil's advocate there. Not that I want to be one of those streamers promoted, but I see a lot of people grinding day in, day and night. Like Rake see my boy Rice with his 14 billion bank. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> Throw them a bone. Get them up there. The content creators who made this game. But it's also great to see some fresh blood. I mean, uh, I'm, yeah, just, no, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just happy Personally. we get new content and also mm -hmm. like you know, it, it's like, I'm glad they're doing this because hopefully it bring new players into the game, the game that I love. It's like, I, I just hope that there are people that watch like Moist Critical and um, the one like true king nuts. group. And like, they, they're like, holy hell, this game looks awesome. Or maybe even just like, you know, I want to go and play this game again because I played it in the past. Yeah. I, I think that that benefits me in like a more, like a more natural way, right? It's like the more people playing, the more people that might potentially be like, oh, I want to start watching videos on this. I might want to start watching streamers on this. I, I, I think... It's a good effect. I, yeah, it, it benefits every... What, what's that saying? I can never get it. It's like a rising tide, all boats or something. I always mess this up. That's, That's it. Me. That's it. Perfect. Is that it? You Is said that the it There it is. Yeah, rising right, right there. tide boats. Yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So yeah, I'm just, I'm just happy with it. And also, like, I don't know about you guys, but like, I, I watch some of these guys, you know, and yeah, I think it'd I've be streamed so... a, lot, a bunch of times. I think it's awesome. Yeah, I think it'd be awesome to see them streaming the game that we play. I just like to see their take on the game we play all day, every day as content creators. Like, I'm looking forward to that. Like, they might do some stuff that's just hilarious, you know. Yeah. It's the thing though. Like, is it going to be a biased opinion from them because they're maybe being paid? Well, they obviously are being paid <laughs> for this, but. Are they gonna have a bicep and they go, this is really good? And then when they go off, they're like, this is absolute crap. I don't play it, I mean. Yeah, you can't um, say that. <laughs> yeah, they can't say on the stream, but uh, we'll have to see. I, I really hope yeah. they like it. I think obviously old schools are gonna be a, a good game and a good base for these people to come on and play as a group. Like this is the perfect game for people outside of maybe RuneScape who've never played before. Yeah, like yeah. It's, it, it's great to introduce a new player too, because you can obviously carry them alongside it and give them items and all that. Exactly, yeah, they can work together. And exactly. like another, another thing is like, Gold was paid to play this game a long time ago. And something I took away, because I watched the entire thing, I watch a lot of Asman. I like his content. One of the biggest things I took away from it was he was basically, like, he was deterred from the game because of the graphics. And I, to I totally understand that to a degree. It's like, for us, we played the game for a long time. We've learned to love and appreciate the old school graphics. But, like, for anybody that's come into this game after playing, like, New Worlds, whether they've been playing World of Warcraft or you know, whatever game they play, it's like, I understand that having a tiny ass, like, you know, the non-resizable RuneScape box and the graphics are how they are. And it takes up like one eighth of your computer screen. It, it's like, it's almost like you're playing like Minesweeper in, in, in just a way more advanced version. So like having the now 117 scapes HD version to the game. Such a perfect it, time now, isn't it? It's like great. It's I really guarantee good. people will try and push these streamers if they're not already to use it. And they'll be like, yeah. whoa, because the difference, like, I've been playing it for a couple of weeks now. And like, when you go back to the old school graphics, it's like, you can't. wow. Yeah, it's like, holy, <laughs> this is this is amazing. It, I think it's just the lighting, the shadows, the way that he's done it. Absolutely beautiful, how it though. bounces off like the characters. And you've got like this great water detail. Oh, it's great. And he's just fixed it recently with uh, atmospheric lighting where it's not as dark anymore. So some of like the weird areas before, like Xanaris was quite strange with like being too dark. But now it looks... Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, he's done a great job. For one guy, like, it's super impressive. Yeah. And it couldn't have been a perfect time, you know, with yeah. these guys coming over. I just really hope that they know about it and that might I, make them love the game even more. I hope they are allowed to. I, I hope they, like, just yeah. told, like, hey, um, you're going to run it on this client and, you know, whatever. I hope that right. isn't the case. That would be really it's bad. It's the Steam client. Like, the Steam client. Oh, oh no. God, please no. <laughs> Dude, please I, don't I'm, do the Steam client. I, I, I mean, I'm at least... sure. Jagex must know. Like, they, they must have the yeah. foresight to realize to the audience that these guys oh, play other games for, it's like graphics has to be there. But yeah. Curtis, dude, I have a 
a proposal yeah, for good. you, okay? So we've said this a couple times before, but how fucking cool do you think it would be if they had someone like Tyler One be the host and just oh. do the entire <laughs> dead man mode when there's the next yeah. tournament? Like pay him like a hundred grand. Because he, he <laughs> plays old school RuneScape where he has done. You know, he, he's, he's familiar with the game to a point. But, like, can you imagine how huge that would be for the game? That would be, that would be absolutely hilarious. I mean, Deadman already pulled amazing <laughs> views, but could you imagine if you had his on top of it as well? Dude. Like, his present? Uh, yeah. The only I problem think... is, like, he wouldn't obviously know all the stuff going on and maybe wouldn't be able to keep up with, like, you know, the combos and stuff happening. Because, obviously, right now, obviously, yeah. Pure Spam Aiza, they do a great job because they know exactly what's going on. You know, Ian's <laughs> a very experienced PK to a fact where you can know exactly, you know, what's happening on the screen. But Tyler would be like screaming and just that's not that be the present you know what I mean <laughs> I don't understand what's going on <laughs> imagine, <laughs> imagine imagine if you had like Ian next to him Pure Spam Pure Spam's the loveliest guy oh, in the world I love him a bit but he, he's so nice and so calm and just relaxed yeah. And like, imagine if they had both of them like hosting at the same. Oh my god! I think it would be hilarious. And I think maybe they go together like bread and butter. You'd have like the one hype guy and like on the side, kind of Ian being more technical. You know, maybe they go quite together like a nice sandwich. You know, might go quite well. <laughs> might be the combo we're looking for. To be honest, I'd watch. Yeah, I'd yo. Watch. So th this marketing strategy, I think, I think RuneScape has barely tapped into this marketing strategy. To be honest, because like. This game, uh, like a lot of like the big creators, like you know the really big creators, I I would I would dare say at least fifty percent of them have dabbled with this game in their lifetime, probably. Definitely. You know, yeah. maybe when they were younger, Just, you know, they're just scared so, to admit it. Maybe. And, and 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 like the thing is, is that like that is crazy because you you can reconnect all these people back to this game, right? And like then then promote all their insane fan base to ex be exposed to this game, like um. So for this list of people, I know I know that there's like there's like a few people that there's at least like probably six, ten people in that list that I know for sure have played RuneScape and played a good amount of it. So these guys, you know, they they didn't just pick them because like, oh yeah, you're you're a big person, you know, like not just that. They picked them because they they have had a history of playing RuneScape or talking about RuneScape or whatever. So this yeah. is crazy because this is like real effective marketing, you know? You want like to know a double, as well. Well, layered. I know? think there's a, an influence that actually came into this as yeah. well. I know Austin, obviously, he's been hanging out with a lot of the One True King guys, and he obviously started out in RuneScape, you know, Austin Raj Patel. Um, so oh, he's probably yeah, yeah. been talking to them about it, and they've been like, yeah, get into it. Like, he's probably yeah. been, you know, big enough RuneScape, and they're like, yeah, why not? We'll jump into it, you know? And yeah. obviously, yeah, um, true. Raj Patel's yeah. huge nowadays. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think mean, uh, that's definitely a factor. It, yeah, it'd it's, be interesting. it's good. Like, they can keep, they, sh they should keep it up. They should keep it up because, um, yeah. Like the potential is limitless. This game could grow so much just off of these kind of things. Mm -hmm. uh, imagine what would happen like for and with the game, with issues that we have in the game, if someone like say Asmund Gold were to just start playing. Because I, I don't know if you remember when he streamed it, but like the old score roots game, like hundred K views just for That's Asmund. And, then, <laughs> and then and then you got like MMORPG, one of our top dogs. And it's like a hundred K <laughs> versus his two K. It's just like this is the most bizarre like universe. I'm just yeah. like, but like if, if say Asmund yeah, Golds did get into the game, and I, I don't even think he's taking part in this. I think it's like most critical in some of the other OTK guys. But it's like if they really got into the game and loved it, with like the size of their audiences, it's like say something came into the game that they weren't so happy about, like let, let's say like the bottom situation, for example, because, and I'll take that and I'll compare it to like the bottom situation in World of Warcraft, that Asmongold constantly like berates Blizzard for not dealing with. And like, imagine that kind of pressure being put on Jagex as a company if they really got into the game. Sa same for like the likes of Tyler1 and the way that he speaks about Riot Games and their situation. It's like, do you think... I, I don't know what would happen because Jagex do have a tendency to like bending the knee when it comes to the player base when they want something like the HD graphics from 117 scape being a prime example of that. And like, I wonder what would happen there. It, it would be really strange because like the big companies like Riot Games and Blizzard, World of Warcraft and League of Legends, like they can be yelled at all day by these massive content creators and they don't change. Whereas RuneScape does, like they listen. So I think it would be a really interesting thing to see like, maybe if you had the likes of them talking about botting and being a huge issue, maybe it'd be addressed. I, it would I be moving think. a lot faster, I feel. It would probably be um, 
influenced by you know these massive kind of creators and i could see a change happening because you you see what reddit was like when the whole hd being cancelled it was only like a few reddit posts at first and then obviously there was these riots and that was just like the likes of normal players all coming together so can you imagine these massive content creators pushing like potentially their audiences to do it like you saw what happened with like odoblock pushing his viewers at one point to vote no for group power and everyone at one point was like oh is it gonna fail is it gonna pass you know what i mean like, could you imagine that these massive content creators pulling like 100k views would just suddenly be like, I don't like this, let's address it. Yeah, Jagger's would probably listen, you know, if you compare it to that. Yeah, yeah, I could see that being a thing. We need them pretty much for this community, then, exactly. is what we're saying. We actually need them to lead the way for the betterment of RuneScape, which is great. Um, also, leagues, we have not really touched too much on the topic of leagues, and uh, I know me, Rice, love leagues. We are both Dragon Tier, and uh, Curtis, you do go hard. Do you have any strats for leagues coming up? I think leagues is all about just trying to pave in your first few goals based on the task that you're seeing. But with this league coming out, it's so different to the last one. That's what makes it so fun and uh, also unpredictable because it's different every single time. And I believe this one, you're only unlocking a few skills at the start. And then you're also picking out content based on tasks that you're completing. And then you're able to unlock, like, say, a certain boss. So realistically, this one is all about picking your favorite content. What do you want to work on? Do you want to work towards raids? Do you want to do God Wars? So I think it's just picking out your favorite content that you're good at and uh, realistically the skills that you want to train at the start. There's not really going to be a big strat for this one. It's going to be so different across the board, you know. Everyone's going to have their own different strats. Like the, the replayability of the last league where you can make like different account builds, after a while, like, you know, you could follow someone else's kind of build to get like a certain mage weapon or... But this one is just so many different starts. I, I wouldn't even be able to know where to start with, to be honest. I think it's just about picking your favorite skills and having fun with it is going to be the best strat. You're not going Hunter? I mean, uh, depends, really. It depends on the <laughs> task. I feel like you're going to... Because they reveal a lot of the tasks at the start, don't they? Or even the relics as well. So yeah, I think it's all about it, looking at that. Yeah. yeah, the wiki literally comes over about like three hours before, so, I think. Will you base you, it based off of that new info, or are you going to base it off of what, goal, what type of content you already want to do? I think it's just going to be the content I want to do. Like, maybe the... I feel like grinding raids for, like, a couple months work towards that you know do all the skills towards that unlock your herbal or Same. you know your slayer <laughs> exactly yeah i feel that's gonna be the most fun out of it but uh, they, they need to balance the points well with this kind of league because with the amount of different content you got to feel like is there a strat that's going to be better or a piece of content to unlock that's going to be more points overall i feel like after a month that's going to be apparent and people are going to be like oh maybe i should have you know aimed towards doing slayer a lot more because it would have been more points so they need they need yeah. to make sure that's all balanced yeah for sure but the good last thing is, time, this is the third league, you know, they've learned from that. So Yeah, la last time um, there was a few glaring problems, right? Like, uh, you know, some some areas have more points than others by quite a bit. And like, you know, some some relics were like stupidly stronger than a lot of the other ones, even though they were like not Virtual even... recall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they right. were like, you know, this thing was probably a tier five, but it was like it, it was a tier two or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, OK. And you but, got roasted yeah. if you chose jewelry as well. Like if you chose yeah, jewelry, came man, over. Man. Like that, you know, Rukov did so with total recall. It was a no brainer. You know? Yeah, don't tell me that, that man. <laughs> yeah, oh, like, don't uh, worry. I was the walker on the first league, and no, no regrets because I loved keeping uh, the ammo. The shaman grind was so nice, just not picking up the arrows, you know. <laughs> but walking everywhere, it changed me as a man. Oh, <laughs> so my I, grind I, was not nice, uh, man. No, it did not help at all, bro. I've got yeah. a question for you guys because I, I'm the uh, I'm the rotten apple here because I'm not too big a fan of leagues. Now I, I want to know yes. for you guys individually. I'm not sold on the idea of it because I don't understand it. It's like when I hear you're gonna go for raids, in my mind I'm just like, why wouldn't I just do that in the main game? So I, I wanna know what is it for you guys individually that is like the enjoyment and takeaway from it? Is it the cosmetic reward at the end? Is it the high scores or is it just like the day to day gameplay with increased XP? Mm -mm. Curtis goes first. Okay, so at the end of the day, like RuneScape is a game where it doesn't have to always be about having to gain something or having to have something on your main account, you know? Like this is a game mode where it will only happen once in like a lifetime potentially. And like if you don't play it, you've missed out. I've had so many people come in and be like, oh, I should have played this last year because it looks so fun. And this is how RuneScape works. You set goals, you work towards them, and that's what makes the game fun. If you go into RuneScape with no goals, you get burnt out. 
straight away. You know, you sit at the Grand Exchange, you're logging for five minutes, you log back out. Leagues literally makes the game where it sets you goals because you've got a massive task list. So automatically you log into this league world and you've got goals to do. You, it's like, you don't have to think about what goals you have anymore. It's all in front of you. You can work towards a certain path and it's like, kill this certain boss a certain amount of time. So it just kind of makes sense how to play RuneScape. It, you know, for a new player who has no idea what's going on and they see this task list, they're just going, oh, I can work towards this. They learn content along the way. And then you've got the fun side of it where you've got these relics that you've never experienced before as well and the extended XP. So it's fast paced as well. So overall, it's just like a bit of fun for a month and a half. And then you go back to the main game and work on whatever you're working on. Like I will literally play another account on the main while playing League. So you can still obviously progress on the main game. It just depends. Okay. Like, yeah, it's the idea of, you know, doing raids but you can do it on the main, but this is doing raids with these relics that you'll never experience and also working towards these tasks that, you know, are quite fun. It's just enjoyable, you know? At the end of the day, like, RuneScape's a game. It's enjoyable, I find. Okay, mm -hmm. so good answer. Mr. Rice Cup. Um, yeah, Rice, you can go next. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, there's different perspectives, right? Like, from a content creator perspective, it's like, yo, free content, you know? Like, and everyone <laughs> wants to watch it. Okay, so that's like, you know, that's my bias, right? But, like, let's, say, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about, like, if you were just, a, a, you know, a typical player. Why would a typical player play leagues? It's it's about the uniqueness, right? It's like the way that, like, I mean, obviously, you know, the end game goal might be the same as what you do in the main game, but what you what you do from the start to to towards the end of it is different, right? And that's the experience you're looking for is how different is it, right? We're looking for a different journey towards the same thing. So you have like your relics to mess around with. You have a lot of brainstorming to do because you're you're kind of restricted on certain things now. So therefore, there's just a ton of uh, uniqueness on how you're gonna reach that path this time around, right? So, and I and I like that. I like. I mean, it's the same reason why we make different accounts, right? It's because we want to experience it, it RuneScape in a different way. So the this league is a uh, league is one of the best ways to experience the game in a very different way because they restrict you, they give you new things to try, and you unlock them as you go. And then you know you have all these like different possibilities that you can never have imagined until playing this mode, right? So it's mm. perfect. But lots of experimenting. And this satisfaction of like making something new work in your favor, you know, that you weren't even sure because it's never been done, but you're here out here messing around and then you made it work with these new relics and this content and whatever. It's, it's so fun. That's the really fun part about leagues, really. Okay. Mm. So, yeah. Agreed. Um, for me, it's like I understand RuneScape. I've been playing it for so long and I love it. But in my mind, the only reason I played is because there is full loot PvP. So if I go grind something, I'm going to use that money and go in the wild, right? In other words, I see other people grinding stuff. It's like you're just grinding stuff to grind more stuff. I don't, my brain hurts just thinking like that. So <laughs> I want to use all this RuneScape knowledge and do something really crazy with it, but I don't want to do any repetitive challenges. And I've already got all the things I need for PKing. I've clapped all the cheeks I've ever wanted to clap. But when you've got this game mode that comes out that's non- not uh, it's it's not permanent it shows your skill as a player and it limits you and i think that's the best thing is that if you love a game you want there to be limits because the more limits there are the more you got to work in between your game knowledge and, and the little knots and holes in the game and so for me it's a nice challenge that i get to actually do something that i'm not used to i get to show my game knowledge i get to work within these limits and uh i get to build an account that is uh, you wouldn't expect a pker to build right you wouldn't expect them to compete with these skilling clans or make rank 42 and whatnot so that's why i enjoy leagues it's it's something different it's not the same grind and it, you use a lot of that game knowledge that you've always had yeah i mean you know hearing you guys talk about it like kind of makes me excited for it like here's the thing like my league experience i i didn't play the first one but i played the second one and i basically did all of the content and got to uh i uh, got to the nightmare got to fasani by the time it was just the nightmare when it was in the game. Um, and so I, I I did all of the early game content, completed God Wars, did some TOB, did a bunch of stuff. And I just remember getting to hard, well, getting to the nightmare, killing the boss. And I, I just remember being there like, these kills are still quite slow. And I just remember killing it and I was thinking, I could be doing this on my main account right now. And for some reason, that was the thing for me that just, like, it just dissuaded me from the whole game mode. I was just like, I'm just going to go do this on my main. And then if I do get a drop, I can keep it. Like, that's just how I saw it. But like hearing you guys speak about it like that, it gets me a little bit excited. And to be honest, I think I did enjoy it. But up until that point, when I when I reached that point in the game mode, I was just a bit like, 
I'm committing a lot of time to something where I don't get to keep it. And I, I think after that, a month, people start to quit because yeah. you know they, they realize that after a while, it's just now grinding this end game item. That's what the end game tasks were: is like receive this drop. But realistically, you could do that in the main game effectively. And you're right; it was not that much faster kills. You know, even these relics, you had to pick the right relics to get actually decent ones. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. I can see what you mean. It would just become you know a, mi a mindless grind. But then again, that's what RuneScape is. <laughs> do you think with the um, <laughs> do you think yeah. with the amount of variations you can use on this next league, there's there going to be a definite meta? I'm hoping there's not. I hope there's strong builds, but I don't want to see a meta like the last two leagues because mm -hmm. eh, I, I like there always will be a meta, and but that'll only be figured out on this one after like I feel a couple of weeks because there's going to be certain content that you unlock will give more points for sure. That always is like it's really hard to balance, especially when you're talking about you know now 15 20 different bosses that you could aim towards like how are they going to limit these bosses is it going to be like unlocking one chunk of slayer or is it going to be unlocking like an individual boss that's what i'm not truly aware about this league yet but yeah they need to be very careful with like making something too strong because i feel like they could easily make raids really powerful you know just because of the amount of stuff you got to do in there yeah or they make it based on how difficult the content is because you know you could unlock the giant mole far more it's easy points it's an easy boss so it's all about balance over it's a trick. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So, I agree 100%. So, um, you know, Curtis, while we have you on, while we're blessed with your presence, uh, I, I feel like I would very much like to talk to you about PvP. Now, awesome. I know for a fact that you are actually a really, really good hybrid. Uh, I love uh, it. That's what I used to do. Yeah. I remember <laughs> we, we fought... Um, PvP All Stars and uh, I remember a great event. I really dude, wish they could do a second one. Like oh, I would love second it. one round would be amazing. I just I know that the guy behind it that all these events like the kind of bringing people up to TwitchCon and doing uh, those kind of events was Mod Stone though he's not with Jagex anymore but he was the guy to kind of push it you know and th those yeah. events were absolutely amazing you know behind the yeah. scenes we were on this set for like ten hours and oh it was just a surreal experience you know the behind the scenes of that. I loved uh, I loved Mod Stone like yeah. I, he was actually one of my favorite. People Definitely, in, in Jagex, just because I was so sad to see him go. Yeah, he, he was so down to earth, and you, I remember just sitting down with him and just chatting. He was, he was such a nice guy. Like mm -hmm. you could have like a conversation about anything with him. Um, but anyways, so PVP All Stars, you smashed it. You and I, I was it? We went the, at it. We went it at was, it, dude. Was it like the semi semifinals uh, or? Yeah, it was the semifinals. I'm pretty sure. So it's after we got out of our bracket. So the two people could proceed from each bracket, and then after that, they had to face each other from another one. That's when we crossed. And yeah. uh, I think it was uh, a best of three. I think I just about snaked the first fight, probably down to RNG with the seventies, and then uh, I think you brought it back on the on the next two. And obviously, yeah. Zerk was my strong when it came down to the wire on that. But dude, no, it was. I I, I was so impressed, man, because like, hey, and I, I don't say this, and I don't, I don't mean to sound patronizing yeah. or like oh, at all, okay? But like, here, here, here's the thing. I, I used to do a lot of PKM back in the day. It was all I did. And I knew that you did a lot of Iron Man. Like, you were just known for being an Iron Man. And when we went into those fights, like, I didn't by any means think that you were going to be an easy opponent. But I didn't think you were going to put up that good a fight, dude. I was <laughs> like, I was so impressed. I was like, because I know that you yeah. practiced on stream. Like, I was watching you I stream. I was going ham on the practice, yeah, with the and hybrid like, fights. Because I did I, dead lands as well, so I had to train for that. And, you know, initially I ordered PvP as well before Ammo Mode came out. That was my thing. Like, my main account's a Zerk, you know. Yeah. So, learning I mean, hybriding was, was all about All-Stars, really. I, I, I think, like, you're just a very well-rounded player, to be honest. Because, like, the fact that you've, yeah, thank you... You, you've got good at hybriding, you're amazing at Iron Man, and you do everything in the game. Um, so my question for you is, for PvP and RuneScape, do you have any kind of, like, idea or, like, an imagination for something that could potentially help the PvP scene? Because I, I feel like at this point we're beating a dead horse, we all know it's been severely neglected, and I was wondering if you had any ideas for something that could revive it, or something that would be good for PvP. It's the hardest thing about PvP. Like, you've got all these amazing PKs, you know. You see them in these Deadman finals. They absolutely smash each other. And you see these, you know, top five that always go through and storm, you know, all the way to the finals. Like, you've seen Inya and um, you've also got, uh, like, some other big names, you know, always making it to the last two. And it's just because they're just, you know, they've been training for years. And that's the biggest problem. Like, it's these entry-level people trying to get into PKing. And like they're getting smashed by these big guys and they're getting demotivated because they're losing all this GP. And like the only way to add 
more seen to the PvP is, you know, training people up, actually getting to that level. So I feel like obviously having like LMS there, teaching people to hybrid a little bit is great. They're going to have to, you know, go through getting smashed without the demotivation um, if we're really going to see PvP come to a light. So I think it's about introducing stuff that's really going to, you know, tempt people to actually train and get past that demotivation stage. It's just really hard to kind of balance because how do you do that? Um, you can't really introduce, you know, content like PvM into the world to make it more active because we've seen what that does. It creates a stigma to where, you know, PvMers are then blaming the PKs for killing them at Callisto, even though it's the wellness, you know, and then they start voting no to PvP updates. You know, some of the worst updates I've ever done was actually the Warden's Rejuvenation back in 2014 before Armor Mode because they added all these big items like Black Chins and Dragon Pickaxe to the Wildy that now it's just created a downhill spiral of people going, oh, PvP is bad, you know, I'm getting killed by these guys trying to get me for my stuff. Like, why do they bother? It's the Warden's, yeah. you know? It's such a bad stigma. So in terms of saving it now, um, I feel like it's just about allowing people to, to train up and want to fight each other. Because I'm sure these PKs want to go out there and just find a tons of fights. That's the biggest thing. You go out there, you're walking around for like maybe 10, 20 minutes trying to find a fight. I, like, I see it at PvP streams now. It's mostly at the Rev Caves, isn't it? That's where they all meet up. Yeah. For like hybrid fights. But um, in terms of PvP updates, like even I'm stuck on that. Like, how, how do you go about it? Unless you just do tons of tournaments and kind of give exposure to it, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I tournaments. for me, my perspective on it is... I feel like there is no one thing that will bring back PvP to its former glory. No. Um, but I played all the way through, pretty much aside from RuneScape Classic, every single variation of PvP there has ever been throughout RuneScape. Um, except from like the last one that came out in pre sleep slash RuneScape 3. I can't, it was in Edgeville. I can't remember which what it was. It was like Bounty Hunter as a dungeon. I, I never did that one. But mm. regardless, I, I think something personally I would like to see is, you know, you hit on a really good point there talking about new players trying to get introduced into PvP. And, you know, flat. at the moment, the only risk-free way they have of doing it is LMS and they get smashed. Um, yeah. So I, I think that, firstly, I think like a rank structure, like some sort of ranked ELO, rank system, something like that, where you have matched gear, you go against an opponent. Let's say, you know, you get 10 fights and they're like your promo fights. And it's like, if you lose all 10, the people that you're going to be fighting against afterwards are also going to be people that have lost basically all 10 as well. If you win all 10, you're going to be against the people that won all 10 and so forth to give those people that fair fight standing, um, which is just like one small idea. But I think that overall, like not only BH having to come back because that's a huge part of PVP, which is just missing from the game right now, but I, I would like to see like a lot of more just like PVP mini games. Like if yeah, you absolutely. played back, if you played back in pre OC, it's like, there were so many PvP related mini games you could play that were Stealing creation, even that would have yeah. PvP, and that was great. Uh -huh. it, dude, uh -huh. killing, uh, incorporate, you know? It wasn't like focused on PvP, but you had like barrage and you could like barrage people then hide inside the cloud or however it yeah. works. And it's like there was that and it's like you had uh, even what was it called? Oh, what was it called? Guffix. The it wasn't yeah, uh, Fist of Guffix. Fist of Guffix. And you, you got the really mm -hmm. simple battle mage robes that were really good for then getting the uh, charms for summoning. It's like there were these little PvP mini games that not always were structured fully on PvP, but it's like PvP was in them, and it, it just made it so people could do those things, and it was also pretty damn fun to do. Um, for me personally, I think that it would be really nice if Jagex did start putting and thinking about some mini games to go into the go into the game. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe have PvP incorporated inside of them. Some of them being fully PvP, maybe some like survival game PvP. I. I constantly go on about this idea I have. There's a game called Escape from Tarkov, which is like a PvP survival game with guns, and it's yeah. like a realistic first-person hmm. kind of deal. And having that like in the wilderness as a mini game, but that would you know, be so sick. It would be really good. I, I think like the more PvP-related mini games there are, it's like the more people will have more of a general interest in it, and maybe going to do something not because it's efficient, but because it's fun. You know. It, yeah, it's, it's like, all about having fun with PvP because do you obviously do PvP for the money? Not necessarily. You go into like, you know, get the glory of slapping someone down. Yeah. But here's the biggest thing with an ELO system is that would work so well. Like, I've seen that point brought up so many times of an ELO system. But the biggest thing is like, would there be enough players to really support that system? Because yeah. if you're at a certain ELO and you're trying to look for a player with a similar ELO, like you're just going to go against the guy who's like really down and not gain any points, you know, because that's how ELO works. If you face a guy who's really low down, obviously it'll get pushed up a lot more. So that would definitely work, but you'd have to have a huge amount of people like doing it to make it popular. Otherwise, mm. ELO would just 
just be dead. It, it, it needs yeah. to be combined with um, <clears throat> highly consistent and successful tournaments, right? Yeah. To kind of spur on people to keep trying, you know, good prize pools, you know, not like just ten k mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, some yeah. actual money in there. And, I and mean, like, yeah, I, I did. That would help. I listen. I, I think about PvP a lot because it's something that genuinely dampens my day when I wake up and think we haven't had a PvP update. Because I, I, I truly do love the PvP. And I, I did have an idea for like a rank system. And I, dude, I had like a, I made a full 30 minute video on this like a few years ago, where it's effectively like the Tower of Souls. You go in there, you have your PvP fights and the reward that you get from winning is effectively, you're going to get like tokens, which equate to time. And that time you can then use those tokens to access like a, an area in the game, which without having those tokens, you can't get into. Now, I'm sure there'd be people that wouldn't like that because, you know, they don't like PvP, but it would effectively be like an extension to the wilderness where there'd be like, you know, a new wilderness course. There could be like a cave with bosses inside of it that have I mean, lots of wealth. Have you stuff. seen Abyss's wilderness expansion with like that yes. massive part? Maybe it could be for that, you know, you've got these tokens, you go into this really OP wilderness with all these kind of content and that'd be sick. And then obviously yeah. you've got all these PKs guarding it as well who've been smashing everyone in that tower and getting all these tokens. Like, it could work, you know? You could combine multiple ideas that people have been coming up with and make it into a big thing. Mm, that, that, yeah. would, that'd be amazing. that'd be amazing. I love all the ideas you're spouting. ELO, the tournaments, I did see the Abyss thing. That is beautiful. Um, I just got to say, though, for those who are looking into getting into PvP, maybe you're a little scared. Um, Curtis was saying that these top five, top two people in the tournament – those are gods. Those are crazy people. They have been training for years. But if you go deep wild, you will not find those people. They exist on PvP World Edge Bank fights, doing armor switches, risking 200 mil. You will probably never run into a god deep wild. So if you I'm are looking confirmed. to get into PKing, don't let that diminish your, your uh, excitement here. You, you don't have to get that good. They yeah. don't exist in the far fun parts of RuneScape. These people are grinding out money in PvP worlds against opponents that could never beat them. So, yeah. you know, go also, deep like, wild, have some fun. You're going to run into some, a lot of noobs. They're really bad. Yeah. Trust like me. the budget They're for PvP bad. as well, it doesn't need to be a lot. Like you can literally risk, say, you know, a 500k setup instead of a decent amount of chance to kill someone. Because a lot of these guys, you know, they go out and rag. That's why reason that to nerf, like, you know, Black Dehyde and Azerican, because, you know, these setups these days, you can literally go out in like 200k <laughs> and still have a lot of power. Like you could risk, you know, obviously... A um a melee weapon have like an AGS spec and you'd have loads of KO potential. So yeah, I yeah. think it's just about finding that balance between the amount you risk and then having a good time. You know, Honestly, any, any budget under one mil has so much KO potential, man. Yeah. You go to Callisto, full barracks, AGS, Ballista, and Venge, you might lose four hundred K on Scold, but you will probably kill most of people that attack you. So just go out, have some fun, risk what you're you're willing to risk, you know, if the hands get a little shaky, hey, that's that's a part of the game, man. What other game makes you freak out that bad? Not even scary games can do that to me. So if Dude. you're getting that shake, you got to enjoy that <laughs> shit, man, because that's, that's a, a part good time. of the It's the yeah. dopamine, it's the adrenaline. Yeah, yeah. It, it means you care, man. It's like exactly. the first time you ever got like a fire cape. I remember, I remember John being Hans, so, they call it. Oh, dude, I remember like being so shaky, like trying to get to my my range prayer, and I was so nervous. I missed it, but like a whole, <laughs> probably like five ticks, and got like one oh. shot. And I was just like, I'm so bad. And this was years <laughs> yeah. and years ago. But um, yeah, dude. Well, I mean, Curtis, like, if there were, let's say theoretically, like they did implement a bunch of mini games that were PvP related or even focused into the game, um, for yourself personally. What would have to be the incentive for you to play those games? Do you think that the fun would be enough? Or do you think there would have to be some sort of like external, maybe like a reward system or like something extra? I think for me, like I'd play it just if it was active because I would get fun out of PvP. Like I do a lot of LMS off stream where I actually used to go play it because I find it fun because it's, you know, you're on an even playing field, you're going out there and you're just testing your skill in terms of like the switches and stuff. So I feel like for me, as long as they just made it like an even playing field and, you know, enough incentive for people to actually play it as in have a lot of players and sure, I'd go into it. But thinking about the rest of the game, they want to play it because they want to make money from it. So you'd have to do some sort of rewards. But how do you balance that to a fact where you're not taken away from the actual wilderness where everyone's going to this mini game instead to do PvP instead of the actual wild where it should be? That's that's what you've got to try and balance. <laughs> Because, yeah, yeah, LMS is quite nice where you can go there and make some money, but it's not, like, super overpowered, you know? And there's, like, a good amount of players that do it. Yeah. I mean, I felt like this for a really long time, but, like, 
when when they work on these updates, I, I think PvP is such like a hard subject for them to address. Okay. Yeah. Because there's there's like it's two polar opposite views on the same activity. You've got PvPers, PVMs, and it just gets a bit messy, right? But it's like I've always thought they need to work first on the content and then think about the rewards afterwards. It's yeah. like once they have a base, solid foundation for something, which is fun or competitive, what whatever way they choose to go, as long as it hits those points, and who knows, maybe they could even like come up with a mini game and have a real basic beta version of it on a beta world where people can test it out to gauge like are people gonna play this game is it something fun like imagine if they made a beta world and they had like a pvp mini game on and like for like to say the week that it was out the people that were playing the mini game just like didn't log into their main accounts and they were just playing it all day every day like that would be a huge incentive and just like okay these people really like this because i feel like that's the thing that's missing from pvp it it's like we don't necessarily have the fun aspect, but we have a lot of these strange competitive aspects, but it doesn't even lead to like a high scores or an ELO system. It's like, I would love to see something which is genuinely fun for the players to do. And it's it's a case of like, you play it for like four hours and you look at the time and you're like, oh my God, yeah, where's my day gone? You know? You do see that with other games, don't you? Where you just jump into it after a few games, it's like, oh, three, four hours are gone. That for PVP would be you know fantastic, yeah. Yeah. Just having that uh, kind of sink your time into and you can just do a couple of hours, a few hours. Something you could just jump into for like maybe 10 minutes or maybe an hour and it would be fun all the way through. Dude, I, I would love to see it. But we have been going now for almost two hours. Uh, Mintus <laughs> and Rice Cub, do you guys have any ending questions that you have for uh, Mr. MMORPG here? No, I think, I think uh, we've had a pretty good... Oh, we've covered everything. Oh, we did a good job. Dude, I think. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we covered I, I a was, lot. <laughs> I was thinking midway through this, and uh, we have to give them a shout out. We have two guys who uh, basically we send the podcast to when it's unlisted, and we're like, "Hey, when you guys get a chance, could you watch this through and do the timestamps?" So, massive shout out to you two. And uh, I was I just did. thinking. I was thinking like, oh my God, this video is going to be hell because we've just jumped <laughs> back and forth in so many different conversations. But it's been absolutely amazing. It's been a pleasure to have you on, Chris. Yeah, thank uh, you so much for inviting me, guys. I really appreciate it. It's been great. Great topics mean? as well. It gets, me, yes. it gets me excited for League because we've talked about it, you know. So Ooh, yeah. I'm even more excited for this launch on Wednesday now. I hope a lot of you guys jump into it. Yeah, 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 well. For sure, I'll be there. We will have... All of your information linked down below. I can't wait Thank to see so all of the group Iron Man stuff you have coming out. Please don't steal my idea for Corporal Beast. I'll be very <laughs> upset if you do. I might. Uh, <laughs> I'm <tempted. laughs>